All right, time Ooh. to get in to Impact <laughs> Wrestling for that August one. August one warning, and before warning. we get that, let's yeah, that's the year shit. warning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 2013 is when a lot of things in my life went downhill as well. I think it was a real yeah, you're warning. Right. You're right. Uh, I got some observer notes here as well as Figure Four Weekly shenanigans here. Uh, the July 29th, 2013 observer. Antonio Inoki, the most famous Japanese pro wrestler of the last 50 years, was elected to the Upper House of Counselors, equivalent to the U.S. Senate and the national election held on 721. Uh, Inoki served in the House from 1989 to 1995, uh, which signified the end of his wrestling career as a full-time wrestler. Before losing in his bid for re-election, he was elected for a six-year term. I just wanted to talk about that because I think it's crazy that that's still a real thing. You think Inoki was going around smacking dudes in Senate? Yeah, probably. I don't know what that dude was doing. (laughs) He's having a good time. He's like, I ain't taking no bump no more. I ain't got to deal with this shit no more. I just run the country now. All right. No wrong with that. No way. You think, would you vote for me if I ran for U.S. Senate? I would vote for you no matter what. Anything. You know what? Thank you so much, James. I really no Tony, problem, do you feel the same I'm way? I'm on the fence. What are your, what's your positions? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> you got to oh, tell man. me political views first, you know? Well, you know, I want to take away some stuff, and I want to add some stuff. Take away? Never. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> when you're in negotiations, you never say take away. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's, it's all bad stuff. I'm taking no, away. I'm taking no, away all the bad stuff. What you. Come no, on, it's man. It's all no. bad. Tony, you're supposed to support me no matter what. <laughs> yeah, I need to know your position, and I don't like it. It's back. It's back. It's back is my position. I'm far back. Now you're backpedaling? You're backpedaling? No. Oh, God. No, like, we, don't need, we don't need a leader that's backpedaling. You're snip, snap, snip, James, snap. you're on my Come side, on. no? Snip, snap, snip, snap, snip, snap. <laughs> <laughs> what, are, what are your thoughts on what three vasectomies does to a man? <laughs> I'm for it or against it, however you feel. <laughs> you can't be on the... No, no. I'm a fence no. politician. Wow. <laughs> vote for me, Tony. Do I have your vote? Hell no. What you the made, hell? You made a lot of great points. I'm going to have to vote for you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jay. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> the, I want to talk about this because I feel like this is an awesome match type. I don't know if they still do this, but I believe this is... Triple A. Uh, the 719 show was the annual Inferno NL Ring, which is Hell in a Ring match, where 10 wrestlers were put in a cage, and the last person in the cage was to get their head shaved. <laughs> <laughs> so you had to escape, and if you didn't escape, you got your head shaved. Oh, you got to climb over a cage yeah. and get out, That's and awesome. if you're the last one standing, <laughs> yeah. your head shaved? That's sweet. The main event started at 10.52 p.m. and was rushed, lasting only about 10 minutes. Uh, Roosh a 10-man re- cage match lasted 10 minutes? <laughs> yes. One, every one minute, somebody had to leave. Yeah. <laughs> Roosh, Ray Buccanero, Blue Panther, Negro Casas, Averno, Brazo Di Plata, Maximo, and Ray Escorpion escaped. This left Shocker versus Mr. Agula in a singles match, which Shocker won in 45 TNA seconds. TNA legend Shocker? <laughs> Shocker. And oh, Mr. my Aguila, God. That's- which is S.A. Rios. So S.A. Rios awesome. got his head shaved, which was originally supposed to get... It happened like three months before. So, wow. What <laughs> crazy the fuck shit. is going on? That, I love that, where like the match stipulation is if you don't escape, you're fucked. That's awesome. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that is cool. pretty crazy. That actually gives me reason for people leaving instead of just, I'm a pussy and I'm going to leave this cage. <laughs> I don't want to fight anymore. I would like to keep my hair. It's a great way to do that. <laughs> Uh, the August 1st figure four weekly. Uh, there's only one thing here from this, but I thought it was pretty fucking weird. Randy Orton was attacked by a fan, quote unquote, at a house show in South Africa on Tuesday. He was scaling the turnbuckles during his entrance when somebody hit the ring and delivered a Ric Flair style low blow on <laughs> as Orton was on the middle turnbuckle. That's awesome. Then he got taken down and escorted out by security. Orton sold it big momentarily and then went after the guy and kicked him once he was being carted off. Uh, WWE is pushing this as a real life incident, but... I believe this is Alvarez saying I'm skeptical uh, to say I'm skeptical would be a huge understatement because uh, they put it on WWE.com and all that stuff. So he thinks it was just them trying to work TMZ, which is something they've been trying to do for a minute. Uh, oh, the, fa- the fan in question did an interview with a local newspaper where he claimed he didn't like Randy Orton and had quit his job in order to attend the show and attack him. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out it was like an, a South African like indie wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> that like shoot did this. <laughs> you have to quit like your Orton. job just to go logo <laughs> Randy Orton. <laughs> That's how real it is in South Africa, Tony. I'll Things quit my different. job. I fucking hate Randy Orton and his and I'll his quit balls. my job to punch you in the balls. That's I'll awesome. I quit my job. <laughs> <laughs> I quit this was... podcast. I'm gonna go punch Randy Orton's balls <laughs> in the balls specifically. 
He said he was a wrestling machine and his motive was to hopefully become a big time wrestling star because of it. WWE he said was Kurt Orton Angle, been- the wrestling machine? <laughs> Whoa. He said WWE said Orton was considering pressing charges. <laughs> considering? I, yeah. Well, maybe he, you know, maybe it is a work, James. Who knows? But mm-hmm. he, running in and hitting somebody in the balls is, 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 uh, it's a rarity. I think that's, that's a good. That's ballsy, you know? <laughs> you're going to sell that for sure. There was a little I bit would. more here. It says Brian Alvarez went on to say that he fucking hates TNA and <laughs> wishes they would die. <laughs> <laughs> he had a bunch of tildes and exclamation points there as well. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the August 5th observer, uh, Jock Rougeau, uh, Jock Rougeau Jr., excuse me, 53 years old, said he was subject to a death threat recently. Rougeau said that a man showed up at his property owned by Jock's father and brother Raymond. A tenant at the complex answered the door and said a five foot mi- a five foot eight inch male with a large overcoat was at the door and asked for Jock Rougeau, who didn't live there. The tenant said he didn't live there, and then he was asked if the tenant knew where he lived. When the tenant said no, the man allegedly opened up his coat just enough that the tenant could see he, <laughs> what was described as a twelve millimeter gun and told the tenant to tell Rougeau he was looking for him. The tenant called the landlord, who informed Rougeau's family. Jacques Rougeau immediately told the story of the incident on his Facebook page, and then called 911, and then did some <laughs> local media interviews about the story. He said police told him to not sleep at his house. <laughs> huh. <laughs> That's... Hold on, quick, friend. I gotta write this on Facebook first. I need to tell my that Facebook friends. That happens a lot, I feel like. People go to, go to Facebook the internet first. first, yeah. Especially now. I mean, yeah. 2013, but like now especially. So some dude was out to fuck up Jock Rougeau. 2013 was crazy, dude. You could farm villa it up up there. <laughs> yeah, but, but, Our <laughs> mom was constantly sending me bullshit notifications. Please help oh, my you, crops. Oh, you gotta send her a carrot, bro. <laughs> I can't. I can't <laughs> do it. <laughs> One carrot. Send me the carrot, you bastard son of mine. And help I'm Jock not getting Rougeau. on Facebook. And you cannot make me. <laughs> Jock Rougeau is dying. Large overcoat man is here naked <laughs> with his fucking gun. <laughs> Here's a, a fun one that uh, James will like. Here's the story on the Kevin Steen DVD that ROH released and was pulled. When Jim Cornette and ROH parted ways, Cornette and Joe Coff, who heads ROH for Sinclair, made an agreement that neither side would publicly disparage the other. That's one of the reasons Cornette was quiet for as long as he was. Privately, he had issues, as they did with him, but he and Booker Hunter Johnson, which is delirious, uh, were friends, and he liked most of the roster, and his real issues were the support from Sinclair. Uh, the company released a Steam DVD where Steam buried Cornette, blaming him for the company going down. Cornette called Johnston, Johnston, uh, <laughs> when he heard about it. Johnston said he didn't know that Steam had said that, nor had he seen the finished product before it was released. According to Cornette, Johnston told him he didn't like that it talked about the storylines and the matter he did on the ROH uh, official release. Plus, Steam blamed also, uh, Cornette for things Johnston came up with. Uh, as well. Others said Steen was just giving his honest opinion of what happened over the past two years. Cornette contacted Koff with a list in writing of things he had problems with, as well as noting that the booker didn't even know what the big star of the company was saying about creative before it was released. Koff pulled the DVD. Uh, Greg Gilland was okayed, uh, had okayed the DVD before it was released, but it's not clear who did and didn't know what Steen said before it was released. It wasn't forced by anyone or even heavily pressured, although Cornette's call likely uh, precipitated it. So, uh... Yeah, so Cornette did not like Kevin Steen talking shit. What a surprise. <laughs> yeah, right. That had to be one of like the biggest angles around at the time was like, is this a Cornette work or is this a yeah. shoot? Yeah. Because even on the shows, it felt like, I mean, you know, for those that don't know, Cornette and Steen were feuding in ROH. They did an angle where Steen, <laughs> an angle, quote unquote, where Steen was to go away. He lost the loser leaves thing to Generico and they wanted him to go away and lose some weight, which was Cornette wanted him to do that. And then he did, and then he came back, and uh, things still weren't that great because it didn't feel like they really wanted to push the dude. It was the Davey Richards and Eddie Edwards and Roderick Strong show. Uh, yeah, we just didn't fit. I mean, Cornette wanted to do like an MMA thing, and yeah, uh, Steam was like, "No way, fuck you." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I didn't, I didn't even know about the story that they pulled that. I wonder if anyone has that DVD and has like what he said. I'm sure Steen has talked about it since, like the stuff he said on that, on like a high spot shoot or something like that. Yeah. But I'm. I think it's funny that they included Steen just shitting on Granite in one of their DVDs. Cause <laughs> I don't think Arwitch, I mean, Arwitch would do the shoot interviews before, but I don't really remember them doing like DVDs, like compilation sh- where they just talk real shit. They had, uh, yeah, well, they, yeah, they had the uh, straight shooting straight series. Shooting. Yeah. Uh, but they got rid of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those were awesome, though. The Bong yeah, Joe cool. one is like all timer shit, too. Yeah. That's cool. There's 
20 hours of Raven behind the scenes or whatever the fuck it was. Secrets he's, of the Ring. That's what yeah, it was. He's not even fucking saying anything for most of it. He's just talking. <laughs> <laughs> he's just going. Yeah, he's just saying shit. <laughs> Dixie Carter asked for questions on Twitter, which ended up being a terrible idea since 90% of them were people ripping on her in TNA. <laughs> yeah. She said she'll do this every Thursday. <laughs> That's a PR great. master. <laughs> Dude, which was at the time Dixie's Twitter was being advertised randomly on the show. Just it was on this show that to we do were it, watching. Yeah. Well, they never, uh, yeah, they never advertised the Impact Wrestling Twitter. It was always just no. Dixie's Twitter, which was yeah, what, funny. It, everything felt very weird on the shows, like a lot of the small things like that. Uh, speaking of TNA, the company has pushed an internet video that a mystery person will be debuting on the August 1st show in Wichita Falls. Ooh. Don't know who it is, but the rumor of Dave Batista has no chance <laughs> since he's in England shooting a movie. Plus, I can't see them being able to afford him right now. That we've was heard the biggest Adam, one. Batista was Batista. the rumor. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we've heard Adam Pierce is coming in and Dave Lagana is attempting to get other newcomers in. Uh, the plan is for the tapings to revolve around a few major angles, but the Saban Bully Ray match on 815 plus Bound for Glory series matches. Uh, so Batista, I was trying because I wanted to find out because I remember for some reason the last like thing of that happening was when New Japan was doing the time bomb thing and everyone thought it was right back. <laughs> That's the <laughs> yeah. one I remember. But, <laughs> but I forgot Batista was a fucking rumored thing for August one morning, which is even crazier. Yeah, but I remember Batista. Out. That's nuts. The rating for this impact did a 1.03 uh, with 1.25 million viewers, even though it was semi-live and promised a big surprise at the end. Part of the drop is that uh, the lead-in of Cops was also down to 1.10 million viewers. Uh, the show did a 0.70 uh, males 18 to 34, which is a little above normal, uh, but the 0.70 in males 35 to 49 was way down from normal. So they don't like surprises, those older men. Is that right, Tony? You don't like a surprise? Yeah, that's true. I hate surprises. Just tell me what's going to happen. I just want to know. <laughs> we don't have time no more, right, Tony? <laughs> yeah. You are not 35 to 49. <laughs> you know, I gotta we don't have time step. no more, huh? I got to get my steps in. I ain't got time to wait. Yeah, exactly. You got to get my steps. Menial job to do around the house. I, <laughs> I got to pitter-patter my feet, you know? That's what oh, I got to do. Before we go into the show, James, I need to know about the cloud, the couch cleaner. I need oh, to know. The little green monster I got. The yeah. little green monster. That's right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Tell me that. Tell yeah, me that. Yeah, so I bought here. this. I, I was like, I wanted to wash my couch, but I didn't want to like ruin it. Sure, <laughs> I guess is the biggest course. thing. Because like, you if didn't you want to just put, put the cushions in the washing machine. <laughs> if you over, if you put, use too much water, the couch is fucked and you're done. Yes. Uh, so but I found this thing on Amazon. It was called, I think it was legit just called the little green monster, a little green or something. That's uh, awesome. Yeah, it's a little vacuum, but it also like shoots water out the gimmick. So like Whoa. you can shoot it and then vacuum it up immediately so it doesn't like yeah, stain yeah, yeah. the couch or sure. doing like that. So you can mix in like uh, like pet stain spray and stuff like that or like whatever the case may be. So, oh, are you throwing a bunch of shit in there? Yeah, I mean, I just made a concoction and then went to my couch and <laughs> Holy fuck. just started fuck no. gimmicking. Your couch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was awesome. The couch looked fantastic. Uh, there was no stains on the couch from the water or anything, which Let's I was go. surprised about. Let's uh, go. And it fucking was awesome. And I haven't had, like, that couch hasn't been cleaned in like two or three years. So, like, That's that great. was pretty sweet yeah for sure so is this a thumbs up for the little green monster the darnell i, I think it's a thumbs up appliance I, review i All mean right. i i had no this is, might be the only appliance that i've gotten recently that i didn't have any fucking problems with right out the gate to be wait honest what other ones you. did you have problems well with? the air fryer i burned everything in the house and <laughs> <caught> <laughs> thing on fire that and was your fault well, that's, to be fair. Your error. that's that well, was your fault. They set me up for failure. <laughs> Fair. You went okay. upstairs when you were making. What were you making well, in there? You went upstairs. I had menial tasks to attend to. Just make the food. I don't have time. Just make the food. <laughs> you can't just walk away. <laughs> What was the mop gimmick you got? You the sales of that went tremendously. I can only ever. I only oh, ever you see know that, what? that went now. really well too. I didn't have any problems yeah. with that. Spin mop uh, or whatever. Spin mop went great. Yeah. yeah, that was fantastic, and it's been fantastic. So shout out. Well, there you go. Um, still to this day, for anybody wondering, that thing is awesome. I'll let you know about the little green monster, how that holds up over uh, weeks or whatever. The air fryer is okay, I guess. I mean, you know, I'm still burning air fryer sweet. Come on now. I'm still burning shit. I can't. There's too much going <laughs> on. It's too <laughs> much heat. Down. Turn there's too much heat. Turn it you're down, cooking, man. You're cooking on, too man. long. Uh, too high heat. That's your problem. Turn it down. Some bitch in too. I don't like. I got to be able to look at it and tell if it's ready. You know, I don't like right, sticking three, anything in the meat. Three fifty you know eight mean? minutes. Flip it over another eight minutes. There you go. That's when it. you st like when you stick something in the meat, the juices come out, and like I'm trying to keep the juices in. You know what I mean, so I don't I like poking it That's too fair. much with items. 
Um, That's true. And if you cook it on a stovetop or in the oven, you can kind of tell. You know what I mean? Or you cut it into it for the first time you're about to eat it and you go, oh, fuck, I fucked this up. No, you well, just you, get like, oh, you can just get a meat thermometer and then just poke that in there. And you know, if, if you don't have now. respect for your air fryer, your air fryer is not going to have any respect for you. And that's just. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I'm about to beat the hell out of that air fryer. No, don't do <laughs> no. that, especially in front of me. I've really hurt my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> it better get a clue quick because I'm burning any, way too much money. If there's any appliances out there that want to advertise on our show, I, Sales for the spin mop are through the roof, and we're about to kill the air fryer. So you can decide how you no, want it to go. This is, mad, this is mad money. Spin mop up, air fryer down. Sell air fryers now. Little green monster on the rise. <laughs> Looking good, pretty good, little green monster. Pretty good. What do you guys think? Get a little green monster. Good Coming job. Back. <laughs> All right, let's get yeah. to the actual impact show now. Let's we're not talk in there. We're, we're the show's not even started yet, and we're already into it. This yeah, we're there's no intro for this show. There's not. We have well, we don't have time for that. We have menial tasks that we, we have, have things to do. <laughs> Play it or don't. You're right. They are specifically catering to 35 to 49, so they should have tuned in because this is a very uh, bang 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 show. Of course. Yeah, actually, before all the matches, they just tell you when, so you can get up do something else. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just keep it on. You already know what's yeah. gonna happen. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> uh, we start with a backstage segment here. Bad Influence is wondering who August 1 Warning is. Now, Bad Influence, for those that don't know, is Daniel Zinkazarian. Before SCU. they were SCU. No, dude, I was with Deb the other day, and that came on in the car, and I almost fucking beat <laughs> Why her. did that come on in the car? <laughs> <laughs> it was just a random fucking playlist that was on. That I don't know. That is crazy. Wasn't mine. Deb has her playlist, whereas the SCU She's song SCU only. On <laughs> Every fourth or fifth song it's SCU, SCU plays. and Warthor's <laughs> theme just on loop. <laughs> I can't believe Fuck every time it goes, I can't believe it's going on right now. <laughs> Stop this. <laughs> but yeah, they're backstage talking about August 1 warning. Uh, Kaz says, is it someone in the witness protection program? I don't know why he thought that would be the of case. Of course, yes. That makes uh, sense. Dana said it could be somebody coming after us, and I'm going to call PR right now and find out who it is. He should have said it. I think it's going to be Dave Batista. I think it's Tito Ortiz. <laughs> <laughs> Every, every 35 to 49 year old goes, oh, that's awesome. All right. Well, oh, great. <laughs> I'm going to keep it on, but I got to go do some stuff real quick. <laughs> My air fryer is making to sounds and I have to go check on this. <laughs> You're forgetting Daniel said that August 1 warning will answer his DMs. <laughs> that oh, that's good. right. Because August 1 warning had its own Twitter account. It that's had right. a Twitter that said, I am coming. Or Still there. <laughs> they never deleted it. I am here. I think, oh, does it still exist? I don't remember them deleting it. I Looks thought like, it turned into the GFW Twitter holy account, but maybe shit. I'm is that wrong. true? I I might be lying. That but I is swear, crazy. That is I, true. I swear it got repurposed to like another TNA thing. No, it's August one warning. It's still there. Uh, Twitter.com. Some, oh, it something is. Something yeah, TNA is. did. Wait, is it? What is it? August it's one still, warning. Twitter. It's, it's, it's Twitter.com. Oh, it it's August one warning. It's still Let's there. Let's look yeah. at some of their tweets. <laughs> I'm coming to Spike TV and Impact Wrestling on Thursday, eight one thirteen in Wichita Falls, Texas. <laughs> August, his tweet on August 1st, dot, dot, dot. His other tweet on August 1st, I am close. <laughs> his, his tweet on August 1 got 10 likes. That's crazy. <laughs> he tweeted a lot on August 1. He tweeted, long boy August 1 warning at Spike TV 9 slash 8 central. <laughs> <laughs> Who am I? He says. Yo, check this out. Z A. <laughs> a? Yeah. What was that about? I don't uh, know. Oh, guesses include names from A to Z. That's very cool. Another day, another video. Stay tuned. Package delivered to Impact Wrestling. And there's Velvet Sky, Brooke Adams, and Gail Kim tweeting about it. <laughs> this guy said, I'm not a rock star. Who did they think this was? Jerry thought it was Chris Jericho. Oh, people maybe. thought it was Chris Jericho. Okay, so yeah. I, here's one. I am not Dave Bautista. <laughs> <laughs> I am not more than one. I am out for personal justice. Was that the shield or? Yeah, something? I think so. Yeah, probably. Just... July 28th one. Over 100,000 views and many guess as many guesses. Want a clue? Hit 250,000 views. <laughs> No. How, how many? 250,000? 250,000. They'll give you how a many clue. Video, on how many views that video have? Uh, it still no hasn't hit 250,000. <laughs> so no more clues. It's no 247,000. No we need no 3,000 more views on this. Please go clue. watch this video, everybody that's <laughs> listening. We need more clues. <laughs> Who is I'm behind re- August 1 warning? I am. Who? <laughs> <laughs> 
Hulk Hogan tweeted about it. What's up with August 1? Don't need any more headaches with this kind of stuff. GM Impact Wrestling HH. HH. <laughs> wow, do you remember this Twitter account, TNA Creative? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I just saw them respond to one of his tweets. I remember this from way back in the yeah, day. Yeah, that's wow. old school. That is old school. Let the games begin. Wow. <laughs> I am not Dave Bautista. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he oh said that yeah he just said on the one of the tweets i am not dave Bautista. oh yeah I, I wasn't looking at his replies wow okay yeah he says a bunch of bullshit here he's just arguing with fans <laughs> wow, this is really <laughs> cute <laughs> he's just arguing. You dumbass <laughs> you are an idiot earl hebner's running the august one morning account. <laughs> <laughs> you are an asshole <laughs> your mama told me how <laughs> here's a good one from wow. hulk hogan What's up with August 1? Don't need any more headaches with this kind of stuff. I just said GM. that, you bastard. Oh, I didn't hear you say that. He <laughs> just said it a second ago. This, this is why I can't run for Senate. You don't listen to me. <laughs> because I'm not an on-the-fence voter. I'm sorry. I made yeah, my decision. Yeah. <laughs> James, can you read that right, again? Tony? Let him know. Can you read no, that again for now. the first time, James? The first time ever. Can you read that again? from Hulk Yeah, Hulk. okay. So I just <laughs> Wait, I saw this whole Gogan tweet. Hey, you can't What's edit me out What's up with August show? 1? <laughs> don't need any more headaches with this kind of stuff. GM, well, can't, Impact Wrestling, can't, HH. Oh, does he say dash HH? Oh, that's, yeah, that's awesome. That's the thing that. he does. Tony, I remember I said you used that. to sign off like that. That's cool. I I'm said that's you, crazy. I'm glad you brought that up, James. Wow. Yeah. Tony, you remember me and used to watch TNA all the time? Yeah, I also we went watched to TNA. TNA. I was a we TNA fan. Who is talking over me and Tony right now? <laughs> August one morning, maybe. You will find out. <laughs> I need 250,000 views and I'll tell you I am. <laughs> I am close. <laughs> I need 250,000 listens, we'll tell you. I know he's not Dave Batista. That's fucking true. <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> so we go back to the outside of the building and Taz shows up for his job at 8 o'clock <laughs> yeah. which is outrageous what is or maybe this was earlier today maybe it's actually not as outrageous as you would imagine it'd be shockingly you're <laughs> right James <laughs> So Taz shows up and the ECW security is there waiting for him. So I'm sure he's you know very confused. Taz, Taz says, hi, I'm Taz. I'm going to work. Five star performance. <laughs> I'm Taz and I'm here to work. It's, me. it's what he says. It's awesome. Security says, you can't come in, man. Hulk Hogan said, you can't come in. And Taz says, what the fuck do you mean? Hogan said, I can't be on the show. What do you mean? I'm the aces and eights guy. I'm the commentator. I'm right on time. And they said, no way, dude. So Hulk Hogan gave you a direct order to not let me in. They said, yeah, I, that, I, that is true. And I'm just doing my job. That says, you have known me for a long time, Guy and Don West. <laughs> Don West Security? <laughs> yeah, Atlas Security, I, you know me. You both are going to be working in a pizzeria in Brooklyn somewhere, and you're done. Pizzeria. You're done. <laughs> pizzeria. Dude, Taz pizzeria. is going to get some jobs at the pizzeria once they're fired. <laughs> That's you're <awesome>. done. <laughs> you're done. <laughs> That's really not a bad gig. Uh, you guys want to stop working here and work at my pizzeria? <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> that'd be cool, yeah. Uh, so we get a cold open. We do not get an intro. No, fuck you, man. We don't have time for that. Our money. Cold open. We get Manic, who won the X title in Ultimate X. Which Previously also on had Impact Wrestling. Who was also in that match? It was Greg Marashulo. Marashulo. <laughs> Greg. Some... <laughs> Somebody else. I don't remember. Sanjay Dutt, maybe? Yeah, whatever. Yeah, Greg it was Dutt. It was Sanjay. It was okay, Sanjay. Yeah. Uh, Manic won the X title in Ultimate X. He is not suicide. Do not call him suicide. I know that is. Don't do it. Don't do it. Chris Saban beat Bully Ray for the world title. Yes, that's true. I forgot which about is, that. Which was a cool moment. I like that. Yeah, Saban had a pretty good run. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, they did not treat him as the world champion. No, that. no, no match, not at all. The match he has tonight doesn't make any goddamn sense. I don't even know why they did this. Main event Mafia brought in Rampage Jackson. Wow. He's... Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the, main, the main event Mafia was reformed to kill the Aces and Eights. Yeah, right. Was, and yeah. of course, when right. you're looking... To bring in a dominant force here, you bring in Samoa Joe, of course, and Magnus. Yeah. <laughs> Chris Bruce Saban Magnus. challenges Manic champion to champion for tonight's show. Yeah, he said, whoever wins Ultimate X, I want to face you champ versus champ because I need people to make sure that they don't like your I got to go over like mine. somebody. I have to beat somebody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dixie and Hulk were talking backstage about how Spike TV are a bunch of marks. <laughs> they, dude, Bully Ray came out with a lawyer and said, "We're I'm suing Impact and uh, unless you give me my title back. So Hulk Hogan and Dixie have a meeting about this because they are worried. Bully Ray is going to sue them over the title and they say we have to either save Impact or help Chris Saban. And then Hogan made an announcement that'll shock the world. 
which is that the world title will be on the line at the pay per view. <laughs> he ripped the he ripped the thing of the contract or whatever he had oh, in his hand. He the, ripped uh, it yeah, up. The, if they served them papers, of course. So he Hulk said, no, makes no, no dude. No Saban versus Bully Ray in a steel cage. Hardcore justice, dude. We're gonna bring all those ECW dudes out here. We got Atlas. <laughs> <laughs> we got Atlas. <laughs> Don't need more headaches, brother. Taz, you wait till the pay per view, brother. So Hardcore Justice was a TV special. Not right. Pay-per-view. It wasn't a pay per view, right? They yeah, were doing yeah. this for a lot of stuff at the time. They would do like I think they did like four or five pay per views a year. That was it, and then they did these specials on TV. For yeah, free. they yeah. did the specials a lot, which is uh, similar. I mean, AEW kind of does that now. AW, yeah, I, think, I think every week is a special. Show. <laughs> yeah, Fighter Fest week four is that was up. crazy, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have no intro for this show. It goes straight from the cold open to the crowd, uh, mm. which is the pacing on that was very weird. I don't know why. Wichita there was no intro. Falls, Texas, by the way, which is it seemed like a good house. Yeah, I mean, it looked pretty good. I don't know what the yeah. other side looked like, but that's you know. what I was thinking as well. Uh, Mike Tanay and JB on commentary yes, tonight. JB, Jeremy Borash, Taz, you stay out of my building. <laughs> yeah, Taz, you work here. You've been the commentator. You get not tonight. <laughs> Do you remember Bitch. when TNA brought in the third guy? Who was the third guy? I don't remember. It was they with didn't... JB and Mike Tanay? Uh, it was Taz. Oh, fuck. Third was... guy oh, shit. and Mike Tanay. Uh, it was good. Oh, we're going to do our research right here on the podcast. That we was do this right here. We'll be fresh air, if you, you will. You are going to have to know. Uh, I'm looking on the GameFAQs forum that's talking about it, and one of the comments says, wow, that sucks. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> no I one see. knows what this guy's name is. Was it Todd Kennelly? That's there he is. Todd, Todd Kennelly. Kennelly. Todd Kennelly. Todd Kennelly. I also Todd. see Dub Pope, Dub Pope and uh, Sanjay Dutt and Don Callis and Madison Rain, and they had a lot of commentators. Holy shit. Yeah. Todd, yeah, Todd Kennelly. I don't fucking remember this guy's face at all. They never really showed it. They they stopped going to the commentary booth when he started working there. So. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Taz, Todd Kennelly, and Mike Tanay. And then he got fired. Damn. Uh, Streets are hard, man. He probably worked at the pizzeria. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> pizzeria. <laughs> he got fired before this episode, obviously. <laughs> uh, the fans voted tonight that Austin Aries versus AJ Styles will be the main event. Okay. Is this a first time ever in TNA or a first time ever? Because they kept bouncing around on how they were wording this. They gave it a pause. This is the first time ever on Spike. TNA matchup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but then AJ's promo was kind of made it seem like it was first time ever. But I don't know. I'm I'm not sure. I'm gonna do my research. They have another. I know they ha- no. This is not the first time they've faced. They also had another match uh, like a month. Yeah, later. they were some ROH. Yeah. Yeah, they had a match later that was. Probably better than this one. <laughs> I did oh, they, like this one though. Yeah, they it was good. 2005 ROH, I guess. Okay. Yes, they yeah. did. Um, this is a Bound for Glory series match. Oh no. Um, the way that Bound for Glory worked was interesting. Bound um, for Glory series was interesting. <laughs> I I actually really like the concept, and I think it's cool. And it was very cool, especially at the time because like the G1 was just starting to pick up G- speed in America. So yeah. like people were like, oh, the Bound for Glory series is kind of like that. So that's kind of cool. But Bound for Glory's point system was very weird. Um, you got like seven points for winning, zero points for losing or something. It was seven points for pins and 10 points for submissions. Submission victory gave you 10 points. A pinfall victory gave you seven. A count out victory, five. A DQ victory, three. And a draw is two points. While a DQ loss would cost you 10 points. There was a year where Joe was doing just DQs. <laughs> He had like negative 40 points or something. That's right. I forgot. He was just that. trying to take people He's out. Fuck this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If they, Cause if they, if they, they get no points, he just get negative points and they get zero points. So yeah. like he would just have matches with him and DQ himself. <laughs> <laughs> so the, uh, that the first year they did it actually. The problem is that as a viewer, that's incredibly fucking difficult to keep up. It's hard with. to keep. Yeah. Yeah. Like, how, I mean, unless they spell it out for you, which they, they, you know, they're trying. They did. They have boards yeah. and they show you and that's they fine. And I never commentary. on their nameplate too when they come out. Yeah. On the, uh, right. thing. I never had problems following it when I watched, but I, mm-hmm. I know that people but can. you watched. Yeah. I watched, watched. Yeah. And I know, and I know that, uh, man, like having like 40 different point variations is tough. You yeah. know, like, you know, maybe just a win and a loss one. Then, like, yeah, that's sure, probably better. Maybe, yeah. And win, loss, and then the DQ one. I think that's fine. I like, I like what it. they were doing here with it, where the fans voted for the series matchup. That was event, awesome. Uh, yeah. On the shows, which was kind of cool. Um, yeah, yeah. 
if Nigel ever had the chance, they would not let him. Fuck you. Let you know <laughs> Keep him off the show, dude. He's not ready. Uh, so we get a pre-tape here. Uh, it's the August 1 warning gimmick no. video. Friday at the TNA offices, they received an ominous video and said they'd be here tonight. Uh, and then they show another video, and I didn't understand half of it. <laughs> August 1 is here. You all haven't guessed who I am. I'm the one who shall inflict pain, and my arrival tonight will shock you. You I don't, did he say you will get throttled? Is that what he said? Dude, <laughs> says, what did he say, Tony? I think he said step in front of me, you'll get dropped. But did he say oh. throttled? I wrote down. He said you will. <laughs> <laughs> you, will get get throttled. you will be frog splashed. <laughs> So we all three heard something different. <laughs> Maybe we watched all different videos. Maybe that was the point. I <laughs> like the throttle of the frog slush. Look at the chat. This is what my notes was. <laughs> I had to hear that wrong. You I legit be, wrote, you will be throttled, and then you'll, you fart. <laughs> you'll be frog splashed. Viva la raza. <laughs> you will you, be frog splashed. You will be throttled wall style. <laughs> and what was yours, Tony? You will get dropped. I don't know. No, that's the most ridiculous one. I don't think it could be that one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Who <probably>. are you? <laughs> yeah, what are you talking about? Holy shit. All you right, been so warned. Stay tuned, because I am here to throttle you and frog splash you. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. You know what's even crazier? We'll talk about it when we get there. Okay. Uh, because this August 1 guy was being built up as like he's the death that he's going to kill the he's fucking... Gonna, yeah, he is a big force to be reckoned with is what this is meant to fe feel like here. Everybody outside of Main Event Mafia and, uh, and, and, uh, Aces, and Aces. Aces and Aces did not care about this guy. They didn't give a shit! <laughs> no one! Except Dan was a Kazarian. Dan was a Kazarian there. That was off the job. That was, <laughs> that was on were, TV. They would just try to get promo time. They say, "Well, anybody got a promo about it? <laughs> yeah, fucking sure. August one warning, please." <laughs> uh, so we start off. We get the Austin Aries Town Hall. It's the greatest man that ever lived, which was a tremendous nickname. Oh my god, this guy was firing on all cylinders at this time. Yeah. You want to talk he about an all-time run for this dude? I was telling Debt, I was like, Austin Aries was like the fucking man for a long time, man. And then, yeah, he was. Fuck you, man. Even in <laughs> ROH, man. Yeah, he was two yeah. first two time you champion man. in ROH. And, yeah. <laughs> Shit was awesome. You let us uh, down. <laughs> yeah. Fucking hell. He says, uh, I guess the mic wasn't working at first. He's like, Can you hear me now? You know who I am? And then they started chanting his name, which was which was cool. Uh he says a lot is going on in Impact and they're all focused on the world title. I have no I don't think about August 1. <laughs> I don't have any thoughts on August Whatever. 1 warning. Uh, he says I want to, he wants to congratulate Chris Sabin on beating Bully Ray and becoming world champion. Uh, but with the congratulations comes with a warning. August 1 warning is me. Uh, he says you are now the hunted and the man that handed over the X Division title for the world title has an X on your back. And you're looking at the man's going to win the Bound for Glory series and become the next champion. Uh, tonight, AJ Styles versus Austin Aries. Uh, Aries says, there's people in the back, and the knockouts, and the wrestlers, and the people that set up the ring, and the people in catering. They're all wanting to see AJ Styles versus Austin Aries. <laughs> <laughs> no way. <laughs> Who the, you, all of them are talking about this match? All, <laughs> all, all of them. <laughs> the fucking it people weird? in catering? It's so weird he said, tonight live on Spike Television. Which I thought was really weird for him to call it Spike Television. They said go out there and do a five minute promo, so he had to stretch out some more. <laughs> he said he was the best talker one. on the show, him and Rude. Yeah. So like, yeah, just go do something. And he would call himself the common denominator of greatness. I never heard that nickname. That sucks. Is, that, is he been going I'm glad he that? Didn't, that didn't stick. It did no. stick. He was that forever. Was he? Well, it, yeah. Okay. Well, define stick because <laughs> he, <laughs> he said it every time. Yeah, okay. No, <laughs> he tried to I'll get take it. That. Yeah. <laughs> He said, they call the Phenomenal One versus the Common Denominator of Greatness. Now, no one was calling it that. I promise you that. Except you. Uh, he said, AJ put TNA on his back for the first decade, and Aries going to put it on his back for the next decade. But here comes Bobby Roode and his fucking awesome-ass theme song. Fuck, this song is awesome. I'm, I'm off, off the chain. chain. I don't think it had lyrics, did it? This was just nah, the not this one. one. Yeah, Sorry about not that. this one. But, but still, damn, is, the lyrics I, was I like, awesome. The lyrics one was <laughs> fucking cool. Uh, Rude comes out and he's running him down. He says, you want to talk about dream matches? He said, let's stop talking about dreams and start talking about nightmares. Like the nightmare I've had since Destination X when you beat me for the world title, which is a fucking awesome match, by the way. And that whole buildup was an all-timer. It is angle. probably top five, maybe even top three TNA angles ever. Top five, yeah. top ten, some are saying. And I'll tell you right now, match-wise too, probably top five, no joke. Yeah, top that's, ten at least. fucking awesome. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, because Rude was like, Every hot. I remember, yeah, everyone's like, God, white hot, 
get this fuck, get him out of here. Yeah, man. They wanted him as the fucking champion, man, because like he was cheating and like TNA was like the wrestling company. People were like, yeah. "Oh, you fucking bitch." Yeah, and, uh, and it was the complete opposite how they felt about Aries because Aries was like the one that you know the the little train that could you know yeah, like yeah, yeah. Fuck, get this guy the fucking belt he could do it motherfucker. Yeah, I mean Aries was having the best match of the night every night for a year. Uh, carry the X division for sure. Um, yeah, really, that match is like one of my favorite matches ever. Yeah, that perfect build too, and like they didn't wait too long for it and. It was fuck. I love that shit. Bobby Roode is here, by the way, and you know he's fucking sad because he has a black hoodie on with no graphics. <laughs> <laughs> he says, uh, "I've had a crap year, and since you won that title, and everyone in the back, and all these people, and everyone in catering, <laughs> yeah. forgot what Bobby Roode is capable of doing. I was the longest reigning champ." Uh, and starting tonight, the game is going to change, and Bob Roode's going to do all the things that made him world champion in the first time around. And tonight, I'm going to prove that it pays to be rude, which I feel like he hasn't said in forever at this yeah. point. That was because like he's, got 40, he's got selfish generation. He's got 40 yeah, other things. It factor. Yeah. Ari says, uh, you're the it factor or the spit factor because you keep spitting in my face. Oh, wee, wee. That was a shoot. <laughs> <laughs> that was a shoot. He <laughs> says, I hope you make it to the finals of the Battle for Glory series so I can beat you again. And then Hernandez Ariel! comes out. <laughs> 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 yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Super Max. <laughs> it, it was him with the LAX theme. It was, he didn't even have the uh, the Hernandez theme yet, unless he switched back to this or something. They didn't bring the right phone. They didn't bring the right CD. <laughs> Wrong USB. <laughs> oh, fuck, that sucks. Uh, and Hernandez is out here for his match with Bobby Roode in the Bound for Glory series. So it's Hernandez. Versus Bobby Roode. Uh, Bobby Roode jumps Hernandez during his entrance. Uh, Hernandez, Bobby Roode just gets a bunch of fucking heat on Hernandez. Uh, during the break, Hernandez caught Roode off the apron and then got thrown into the post. Roode has zero points in the Bound for Glory series right now, by the way. I don't know Come how long on! Cheer for Supermax! <laughs> Get the fuck up! Supermax is here! <laughs> That's Dixie and Carter what, in the crown. They <laughs> loved him, didn't they? Weren't they pushing him to the moon? They hey, loved Dixie Supermax. loved him, yeah. Dude, Hernandez yeah. got pushed like 90 fucking times. We talked about this on uh, We talked about this on SGH actually, Tony, but yeah, fucking Hernandez is or Dixie loves this son of a bitch. Cheer for Supermax! Please, god damn. Air Mexico! <laughs> cheer for him! <laughs> I swear at one point they're they're fighting outside and one of the Someone in the crowd just yells, you smell. I don't know what. <laughs> Dude, it was is that me. you? I don't think so. Tanae on commentary starts talking about the social media speculation about August 1 warning. And JB says he started all four tapes and can't figure out who it is just yet. But it is not Dave Batista. He did not look at those tapes once. <laughs> he studied all four of them. <laughs> no, what do you, you mean? Did not. <laughs> you were lying to me. J James, I need to know what you thought of the Hernandez top rope splash. <laughs> Look, there has I get, <laughs> there has there has never been and will never be anyone that moves like this guy ever again. No, not all. This is like a good AI AI generated human. <laughs> the way that he moves is like crazy, man. Um, you know the way that he comes out for the LAX intro with Homicide, yeah. where he comes out and the or Throwing like in the video up. game too. Um, yes, where he come out and he has that little hop. That's yeah, how yeah. he moves, period. You're right. That's, that's actually... just all the time is how he moves, which is like crazy because nobody, no human does that. You know, this, nobody, it's crazy. No, this splash was like, I'm trying to, how do I describe it for people that didn't see it? Like he jumps and like, it's, you know how Jeff Hardy goes for the swanton and before he does the flip, like the motion he does, it's yeah. that except without the flip. <laughs> he just does the splash that way. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just ridiculous. And he misses. It's just ridiculous looking. He's the, he's got the craziest movement of all time. Like, he's a very unique guy. Yeah. And I love him. <laughs> Cheer for Supermax. <laughs> Get the fuck up for Supermax. <laughs> Hernandez. That's Dixie in the crowd, by the way. <laughs> yeah, just be yelling Cheer! at fans. Cheer! Cheer! Yeah. Hernandez. You can hear it on the hard camera. Cheer! <laughs> Hernandez is on the outside now. He's, they, oh, by the way, this is uh, during the time TNA had the the long boy ramp, the the ones that connects to the ramp. Oh yeah, which is all awesome. the way. Yeah, 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 that is cool. I love that fucking thing. Hernandez sprints down the ramp and dives over the top rope back into the ring and does a diving shoulder tackle. Which that's is, Air Mexico. Oh, sorry, is it? Yeah, that's what he calls yeah, that. that's Air, what Mexico. Call Air Mexico. They scream it on commentary. Air <laughs> Mexico. TNA. TNA. It's just Dixie TNA. Hernandez, Hernandez, <laughs> cheer for Hernandez. She does the whistle headset. gimmick. She's just yelling the headset. Air Mexico. <laughs> wow, 
Oh, that was Air Mexico. <laughs> yeah, there it was. So Hernandez goes for the border toss. Rude gets out and bumps into the ref and then low blows Hernandez. He rolls him up with the tights, but only gets two. Oh, and then man. He starts throwing chairs into the ring. The referee tries to get the chairs out of the ring because why would you do that, you bastard? But then Bobby Rude pulls out the beer bottle. And oh, he no. Cracks it over Hernandez's head and gets the one, two, three, which I believe is the same way he won the title. Is that not right? Yeah, that's what they say. Yes, on that was he cracked the that was the big moment. Uh, yes. Because if you remember, uh, James Storm and Bobby Roode, uh, Hulk Hogan was like, James Storm is not ready, brother. <laughs> he is not ready, brother. He didn't just like say that like, oh, this is like a rumor. I'm pretty sure he said that like on a radio show. <laughs> it was like a shoot. It was like a shoot interview out of character. He said, like, He's on just Howard not ready. Stern. <laughs> this is like a week. This is like a week before the pay per view or yeah. some shit. James Storm just won the belt. <laughs> this is not happening, brother. He's on Howard Stern or something. Uh, dude, I just don't think this James Storm dude is ready for a brother. He hey, is well, not me, that guy. Let me, let's, talk about your, let's, let's talk about your daughter's ass for a second. <laughs> oh, right, we can do that. <laughs> Why get in here and get your Who is James Storm? <laughs> what is TNA? That's it's more like it, yeah. Who is this guy? Why is he Robin, champion? you hear that, TNA? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got TNA here, too. Yeah, yeah teeth and ass, right? Bob-a-boo, we got the TNA roster. Bring him in right now. Bob-a-boo, Bob-a-boo. <laughs> Bob-a-boo. <laughs> So, uh, Rude wins with the beer <laughs> bottle. <laughs> and th- afterwards, the referee is looking at Rude very confused, questioning why there is glass all over the ring. There's glass everywhere. The referee is okay. pissed. The ref is <laughs> pissed. You fucking bitch. What happened? I don't know. He knows. I don't yeah, know. All right. happened. Let's it's move on. Right. <laughs> also, by the way, I just remembered uh, oh, that no. I was there for the Hardcore Justice tapings. What? Because um, it was in Norfolk, Virginia. Oh, because um, they did two nights of tapings in one show. So they yeah, taped yeah. it at, uh, in Norfolk. It was Impact and then Hardcore Justice. And then I got on a flight immediately and went to SummerSlam. And that's Daniel Bryan you beat are, John Cena. You were out um, of your fucking mind. Man. Wow. Well, I got on the flight and uh, that was where I met Mount Hardy. That's right. I remember oh, you saying that. Because awesome. I, yeah. I was on the actual show show. Like they showed me yeah. on TV. Um, and I was in the Kevin Steen shirt, and then that's Matt right. Talked to Kevin Steen, he was like, Kevin Steen was like, Oh, I saw that, that was awesome. <laughs> Can you tell the Matt Hardy story real quick for people that may not have heard that? <laughs> oh, exactly. yeah. So I was, uh, went to the Hardcore Justice Taping, by the way, fucking awesome all time show for them. That's awesome. Um, which was, you know, going to a teenage show and it being an all time show is like once of course. in a lifetime, so like that's sweet. Um, but yeah, I get on the flight. Um, it was to I can't remember where SummerSlam was, LA, I guess, or I was gonna probably at Brooklyn. <laughs> I, don't <know. laughs> I don't know where it was either SummerSlam New York was. or LA. That was it. Um, New York, yeah, one of those places, Miami. Um, but anyways, Matt Hardy and Rebby Sky were on the flight, and uh, I was wearing my Kevin Steen shirt, and Rebby saw it first, and she was like, Yo, look at this, Matt. And I was like, Wait, Matt Hardy? <laughs> 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 um and matt hardy and kevin steen were like feuding big style in roh at the time yes and he was i was talking to him or whatever and he was like hey I'll, i'm gonna follow you on twitter and he looked at my twitter account and he had blocked me <laughs> <laughs> um and anyways he was like oh yeah i'll just unblock you or whatever i was like what'd Aww. you say what'd you say to make me block you i was like, i was i don't know man <laughs> <laughs> you should, you should have said big, it was probably worth it. I probably deserved it. It was, it was probably some Steen thing, I'm sure. That I probably. was like, yeah, Steen's way fucking better. Fuck you, Steen. you fat grip motherfucker. <laughs> Steen. <laughs> Supermax. <laughs> you just keep tweeting him Supermax. Get fucking get out the, of here, man. Yeah, the, the, I think the SummerSlam thing was like a, a 2K thing. I think it was like it was okay. something for 2K. Tony, were you there in too? I was not there for that summer okay. same thing. But um, it was a THQ thing back in the day. Yeah, it, yeah, it might have been THQ actually. Okay, I don't sure. What it was. 2013 was WWE. Um, fucking no, 2K14 probably would have been. It was like there. right in the middle of them changing. Oh, uh, okay. Um, sure. Yeah, it was THQ. Yeah, it was probably, like yeah. uh, it might have been. Yeah, I'm not sure what it was, but anyways, I, I was not there on my own accord. It was to do something else because sure. he was like, because I remember he asked me, he's like, hey, uh, like you keep up with WWE? I'm like, nah, not really. He's like, well, you don't. You at the Kevin? St- you don't watch WWE? I'm like, no, not really. I I was at TNA last night, and I'm going and I'm going to WWE because I got I explained the thing to him. He's like, oh, the I've done the video game stuff before. I was like, yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's, that's awesome. awesome. He's a very nice guy. Though, now Hardy well, was. that's very cool. Thank you. Um, but yes, the hardcore hardcore justice taping was fucking awesome. By the way, that sounds um, awesome because it was the night I've talked about it before. But just I, sure. I know people might not have heard it. Yeah, yeah. Um. That was the night that AJ Styles turned back into the phenomenal one. 
Oh, and so, he does the gimmick. Yeah, yeah he comes out with the entrance the and then throws the hood back and the phenomenal one hits and that Dang. place erupted. I mean, that, that is, fucking, that I was sick. freaking out. That, that, was like, awesome. that was like my dude in 2013. I was like, oh my, that was like why I went to TNA. I was like, holy fucking shit. I can't That's believe awesome. I'm seeing this here. Um, and then they had the cage match too and um, Brooke Tessmacher was with Bully Ray. I don't know. I can't remember if she had just joined him on that taping or not. Okay. But she came out and she was my she god, yo. she was that yeah, was shorts. crazy, bro. Yeah, yeah the shorts. <laughs> yeah, they made it. They made you know uh, what they was going just on stuck with that. The camera right up her ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember that. Um, but fucking fantastic fucking show. Um, I, I genuinely think TNA had a lot of steam at this point, but they kept yeah. making. We'll, we'll talk about it later. It's like just at every corner they couldn't stop themselves. Sometimes, yeah, so it's just yeah, like, man. It was yeah, two it was it was actually always one step forward, two steps back. That was like the epitome of the shit they were doing at the time. Yeah, I mean it's this show was not bad. <laughs> this show is also this yeah. show is also not bad, but it's topped off by just bad. that's all they remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, that's what anybody remembers from this, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so after that, we have Frankie Kazarian live tweeting impact at, from his phone. At, <laughs> make sure you know at Frankie Kazarian. We'll at yeah, TNA Dixie. Yeah, like, okay, okay, so they say he was tweeting from his Twitter account, but then later in the night, James Storm is tweeting on the Impact account. No, he was Did tweeting he from Frankie Twitter? Kazarian's account. <laughs> James Storm was tweeting for Frankie. They all just share one hour. password and one account. That's how it works. Uh, I'm surprised they didn't make them all tweet on Dixie's account, really. Oh, by the way, yeah. also, the main event mafia uh, arrived just before that. Uh, Magnus and Joe are in the group and Rampage Jackson, and Kurt says, tonight we're going to make them an offer. They can't refuse. And Rampage says, oh, yeah. <laughs> this is not the main event mafia. I don't know who this is. No, they got the song and all and the glasses. That's and crazy. And the logo. The USA glasses, though, those go the hard. USA though. glasses are the, iconic. The USA they, glasses are crazy. unbelievable. And also more unbelievable is the main event mafia logo, which is insane. <laughs> they show a 3D version of it later. <laughs> the 3D version of it is out of control. Yeah, really? How come everybody's wearing suits but Rampage Jackson? What's going on with that? Because he's a he's he's a he's a he's a beast. Rampage. Page Jackson. <laughs> oh, okay. He's not gonna now wear. I get, now I get suit. it. Yeah. He it. beat up a door once. All right. Yeah, he... <laughs> <laughs> it Did shows you know that is Titantron. That should have been his Tron. Is a beat the door. Up. The door. <laughs> Rampage Jackson. Boom shows back. Yeah, it's just Samoa just standing there like upset. <laughs> and then some clips of Hernandez just for fun. <laughs> Someone whistle. please make this. Thank you. Uh, it shows the Bound for Glory point system. Uh, I didn't get all of this down, but uh, is absolutely ridiculous. I got all written down. If you now want, hold on, man. James. Why do you think this is ridiculous? Someone being at like forty something points, and then someone's at like fifteen. I'm like, what the fuck am no. I looking no. at here, man? Who do you think? Hold on, hold on, Tony. Oh. Who, who do you think? Who do you think is at forty something points, James? I don't. know It could be anybody. Hernandez. It's Magnus. <laughs> I can't believe it. That son of a bitch does it again. You Magnus. like Magnus. Like him. Tony, do you have the points written down? Yeah, Magnus has 49, followed by Samoa Joe at 26. AJ Styles at 22. <laughs> How do you go 49 to 26? I, I don't, don't know. 49 to 26 is crazy. Christopher Daniels and Mr. Anderson are tied at 21. Jeff Hardy has 17. Austin Aries has 14. Hernandez and Bobby Roode have 7. Kazarian and Jay Bradley have no points. And Joseph Park at negative 10. <laughs> <laughs> dude, dude, Jay Bradley, man. Dude, we'll, Jay, we actually get to talk about him in a minute. We get to talk about him in a minute. We'll get him here. What, what a, what a interesting. hunk, right? Yeah. <laughs> so backstage segment, ODB's with Eric Young. Because yes. they were the tag team champions. Knockouts tag team champions, of course. Do they, All right, do they have yeah. them here? I don't know, actually. Okay. I don't see I don't see ODB with it, so I don't think no. so. I think they were uh, the champions and then they retired those belts, didn't they? They like was they, trash. they love doing that. <laughs> <laughs> uh ODB says I'm back in the ring and I'm gonna beat Gil Kim's patootie. Because ODB had been uh the knockouts referee for a minute because Taryn Terrell was and then wasn't. So they needed oh, a knockouts right. yeah, referee yeah, yeah, yeah. and then it was ODB. Uh, Eric Young says, hey, I have a full plate tonight. I can't be out there. I got menial tasks that I need to do. <laughs> Understandable. <laughs> of course. Uh, and so ODB leaves, and then we see Joseph Park in the locker room doing squats. 
And Eric his Gunn ass. says, you trust me. You see his, his ass. <laughs> large pot of patootie, as you could say. Uh, Eric Gunn says, you trust me, right? Listen, you get in the head and then bleed and then you lose control and then you lose matches. And Joseph Park says, yeah, that's kind of weird, ain't it? That's weird. I don't know why that happens. <laughs> I'm not really understanding what happens here. <laughs> Eric Gunn says, this is a first step to success. And then he gives him a box and he says, you're wearing this tonight. And then uh, that he's, he's just doing that. How come Joseph Park didn't twerk? He said he was going to twerk. He lied. Well, you know, sometimes we say things we don't mean, James. Like when you said you weren't going to vote for me. I, I agree. I, wrong guy. Wrong guy. <laughs> you said it after. Wrong guy. You don't guy. even keep up with the own product that wrong you are a Wrong guy. <laughs> Again, James, wrong guy. James is on the fence about voting for you. Now you're on the is, fence? I, I, you know, this is crazy. You know what it is? You know what's also crazy? Greg Marsculo is here, and he's in Mara the Marasculo! This guy's crazy, bro. <laughs> this is the craziest thing I've ever seen. Not only is it crazy, but he is taking back bumps on the ramp and bumps off the Ultimate X. And He was trying to get a job, and they said, nah. <laughs> 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 you were good, That's Marasculo. Rough. I only remember his name. I don't remember whose fucking interview it was, but somebody said they were like, Voxing uh, with John Moxley because uh, voxing was a big thing for some reason at this time, which was just a you would just leave voice messages to Back each other. Back and forth, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. His voice tag or shit. phone tag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Moxley voxed somebody and he would just, he, all, all the message was Marajula. <laughs> That's all the message <laughs> was. It was like the night after he was on the show. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah, so uh, Manic. Beat Sanjay and Greg Malasculo in the Ultimate X. And he just, wins the Intercontinental Championship. This belt, this belt stinks. Why did they do this? <laughs> the worst. I, the uh, I mean, well, it's because they wanted blue, but I, I you got to wonder if the other X belt would have looked just as good blue. Yeah. The, uh, the big X or the, the one? No, the one before, that they had oh, the, before this. Yes, one. yes, 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 yes. It probably, I mean, probably, right? They could not escape the. WWE light acquisitions, man. Like, I mean, it, yeah. it, the, 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 it legit looks like they put a logo over the IC title. It looks exactly like that. That's what, I mean, that's what people were like, you just made the IC title. And it was <laughs> like, they, they would be doing this shit all the time. And like, they, it, like later on with the Eric Young and Daniel Bryant thing. And it's that like, that was, yeah, oh, yeah that was yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. They just can't escape. They just can't get away from it. I don't even know if they're doing it consciously, but it's like a Probably subconscious not. thing to like, they just can't stop. It's crazy. You know, I didn't realize that they also used that design, but green. I didn't remember that one. I do yeah, remember that, was, that one. That was, that was GF, the GFW. They turned that into GFW, right? And right, they put yeah. It, I, I don't know. That, had to, that felt like before GFW, but I guess it probably was. It, makes it sense was a couple years GFW. after, yeah. Yeah, I felt like Tigre Uno had the green one for some reason. <laughs> Maybe. You might not be wrong. <laughs> I don't know. I actually don't know. Maybe. He did have the yeah. green one. He did have the green yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, I have a picture right here for you. Let me see. Yeah. Let me see. There it is. What the... <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You were right. <laughs> that is crazy, man. Wow. No, the GFW you know. had the next gen belt. Remember that belt? Yeah, the big silver fucking belt. This one, this yeah. belt. The, it was this green thing? as well. Oh, yeah, so the, God. This is a big silver hunk of dog that's shit. That's what Cody had. I remember Cody, Cody had, was yeah. the next gen. Just, He's the future of this business, he is Cody. The future. <laughs> God, what future a prospect. All of Brody. that was just not a great what idea. A crazy time. Hey, it's okay. Fucking. Uh, Andrew ever beat Scott Steiner during that era, so that's okay with me. We get Whoa, W's where awesome. we can get them. <laughs> <laughs> Backstage segment, Chris Saban congratulates Manic, who is unmasked. Yeah, so that was the thing they were doing here, is TJ Perkins' gimmick was, I fucking suck, and I need a new gimmick. Oh, that was <laughs> crazy. Awful. I've been in this business for 15 years, and I did nothing. That's what they had yeah. him say here. I did he nothing in 15 years. I've literally done nothing. So yeah, like, I put on this mask, and that's my rebirth. That is All right. crazy. That like, Yeah, and Chris Chris Hammond just talking to him. Was this before or after Hogan came out and said TJ Perkins was manic the entire time, brother? <laughs> it was probably before, after, actually. Do you yeah. remember that? When he came out, he said, manic's with TJ Perkins the entire time, brother. <laughs> I don't remember that. Yeah. He said yeah. that on TV. He came out and said he's been TJP the whole time. That's oh, awesome. yeah, because they had the gimmick where uh, 
they were like, who is under the mask? And it was Ares. I know who it is, dumbass. And he ass. said, hey, 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 it, hey, it was not Ares. It's this jabroni. And it's just, <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> right. You're right. It's just DJP like walking down the ramp. He's hurt. He's beat up. Wait this a minute, dude. brother. It is this jabroni, dude. <laughs> You're right. That's unbelievable, came out looking like a smacked ass. So <laughs> he cool. was all beat up and shit, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Matic in the pro awesome. says, 15 years as TJ Perkins treading water, and I've accomplished nothing. This, that's holding the mask, up, man. this gives Holy me an identity. Shit. And Saban says, that's how I respect you. We come from similar places. No way, Chris Saban, you never suck. <laughs> yeah, you were always, always good. Sweet. You were always cool and looked cool. Uh, he says, the exhibition title brought me the, to the world title, and that's why I wanted my first match to be against you. So you better bring your best tonight, and I'm going to win. Dude, <laughs> you're right. fucking hell. Yeah, we'll talk about that match when we get to I it. I can't fucking believe hell. they had to say, I've been in this business for 15 years and did nothing. I suck. <laughs> they had a, they had, well, they had a Hogan. <laughs> Look at this little jabroni right here, dude. <laughs> That's fair, the real suicide. I'm manic. <laughs> to be fair, he ends up not being suicide. Yeah. He, he is a little jabroni. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this little jabroni, brother. <laughs> You think you can be Hernandez, dude? You are not the real jabroni. This is. <laughs> You're not that guy. <laughs> You're not that jabroni. Don't worry, Aries. We want to put you under a shitty gimmick. <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck. That's what it felt like sometimes watching this show. It's like they didn't like protect like a lot of people. Like they no, would just. Not the, at all. You can you can tell what the angle was, but they didn't really care about the repercussions like no, down the line or the payoff like, meant nothing. Like saying that TJ, look, man, TJP might be a jabroni, but saying, having TJP say he's a jabroni on TV is like, what do you do with this guy? <laughs> what happened? Like, I also I, liked him at the time too. I was like, a jabroni was... and I guess I still am a jabroni right now. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If anyone beats him, who cares? He yeah, sucks. that's weird. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> um, a Hummer limo pulls up and is White driving. White stretch style. There is style, driving brother. very, very close to these parked cars. Like, like the winch, the fucking window is about to hit these cars on the right hand side. Is we don't care. Crazy. They do not care. Not even a little bit. Tanae says, "Does this con? This is a great. Like, this is like he had to write this. Does this contain the mysterious individual that has been sending videos to the TNA office?" That's how he says. Dixie Carter is just like staring at him in the crowd. You better get that right. Better get that right. She's holding up the cue card. <laughs> and at the bottom it says, "Put over Hernandez." <laughs> Oh, I forgot she was in the crowd sitting there every show. Yeah. Her and Surge oh, were always Surge. there in the crowd. Oh, man. My Surge gosh. would do live performances next to Dixie of all the songs that he wrote. <laughs> yeah, that's why kicks ass, don't it? Yeah, Surge, hey, this is a good does. song, yeah. <laughs> we get Jay Bradley versus Joseph Park, Bound for Glory series matchup. My fucking guy, Jay Bradley, man. Hunk, God, love me a Jay. Gut check winner, gut check winner. Gut, gut, check, gut winner. check winner. Let me tell you more about Jay Bradley before we start here because there's, I mean, James has uh, asked me to do this, so I'm going to do this for him. Well, Jay Bradley sure. is now in the NWA. Uh, his is that gimmick right? is he's one of the dudes from Billy Madison. <laughs> Well, he was also in WWE. He was uh, in Billy Corgan's Fed. That's where that's where TNA got him. Was Billy really? Corgan's uh, Chicago Fed? Oh, uh, oh that's now right. He's back he was in Billy there. Corgan's Fed. Now he's back there right now. I don't remember the name of it. Renaissance? Yeah, Jay Bradley and Wrecking Re Ball Lagurski. Uh, fuck! Like, why don't I remember that? <laughs> Renaissance. It had the. I remember it uh, mostly because they had a big Ego. gold belt, but it was silver and it had an R on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember. Uh, I remember, I only remember because Robert uh, Resistance Pro Resistance. There you go. I remember it because uh, Ego Fan Egotistical Fantastico Robert Anthony wrestled there. Jay Bradley came from there. Um, he did the gut check for people who do not know. TNA gut check was uh, well, it was a uh, work or it was a shoot and then it was a work. Yes, it was. Not, it used to be before before they actually did it on TV. It's what that's their tryout. That was their tryout. Right. They they yeah. hold TNA gut check tryouts, which was like. Hey, you can come, you know, work out, work a match. It was basically like what WWE does when they sure. recruit people. Then it turned into a work on TV. Okay, but Jay Bradley was also Ryan Braddock in WWE. Well, that's probably why okay. he won the gut check. <laughs> <laughs> he faced Festus. Oh, that. that's actually pretty big. No, he won that one by DQ. Oh, okay. Well, after that's Jesse and Festus points. wrapped him up in bubble wrap and duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> Wrestling. 
<laughs> Jay Bradley is here, and he's got some stuff to say. He says, people in this series are overlooking me because I have the zero next to my name, but with a few of these, <laughs> he shows his arm, the Vs start adding up. Let's go. That's my God, Jay, Jay Bradley. Bradley. I have zero points, and Magnus <laughs> has like 50, and you get, you get like up. seven for a pinfall, so I only have to win 45 matches tonight <laughs> to catch up. This I is crazy. EY's here with Joseph Park. Joseph Park, for people who do not know, is Abyss, but he is <gasps> unmasked, and he is uh, his He's brain is fucked up. Yeah. It's, he's like, he's a, it's a split personality. He's Abyss when he bleeds. He's Joseph Park when he isn't. Which is actually cool. I actually do like this gimmick. <laughs> Joseph Park was such a fun gimmick awesome. at the time. He was over too at the time. He was I remember so over. I mean, over, you see yeah. the finish of this match. Is he's the people are popping for hip tosses, and if you yeah. can do that in wrestling, you are succeeding. So yeah. um, we take W's there. Ey breaks out the headgear for Joseph Park, though. Of course, because he doesn't want him to get head trauma and turn into abyss and get cute again. I mean, understandable. Sure, um, abyss is awesome though. So maybe we just Kurt, find a way to keep making him believe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he should just be Abyss. Yeah, yeah maybe. Uh, Kurt also, during this match, uh, tweeted the same thing that he said in his backstage segment about we have a... The boys be tweeting. An offer yeah, that you can't refuse. Yeah, offer you can't refuse. Yes, yes, yes. James Storm was sending it to Frankie Kazarian, who was sending it <laughs> to, to Kurt Angle. Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> Kurt was tweeting out on TNA Dixie. There it was. <laughs> and Kurt was sitting next to Dixie and Serge tweeting on their accounts with their phones. That's true. So that's just really crazy, <laughs> crazy stuff going on here. Mike Tanay starts talking about TNA having the most customizable fitness app ever. Search TNA Always Evolve to exercise with Jeff Hardy. Do you have any recollection of this? Yes, well, I do. I mean, yeah, me and the whole family used to. <laughs> is that we were, is that how you turned into the man you are today? We were rocking with Jeff James Hardy. James is always man. evolving, you know? Yeah, I always evolve. Have you ever TNA's seen this style, app, man. though, by the way? Have you ever seen I it? I am looking at it right now, actually. I'm going to see you guys TNA Always Evolve here. app. It's Jeff Hardy. Uh, you can work out with Jeff Hardy, but you can't actually work out with Jeff Hardy himself. You work out with a video game avatar of Jeff it's Hardy. It's AI generated <laughs> Jeff Hardy. Can you work out with Hernandez? No, it, it died before then. Sorry. This is the, uh, you know, what's funny is this is like the TNA 2 mobile game, Jeff Hardy. Yes, um, it is. You're right. It, it, and like, I remember that screenshot coming out when people were like, I can't believe it. We're getting a new TNA game. And it's got Jeff Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> and it was for this Evolve app. Yeah, oh, it was man. for TNA Always Evolve. Check out that video I said. It's, it's Jeff Hardy's intro to the app. And then he's doing uh, torso and trunk twists. Bicep curls in, <laughs> yeah. in gear, by He's the way. He's doing the big three. <laughs> the big three? This is how I got shredded at the time, man. I was Skull, doing dips with the chair. Uh, burpees in gear. I was doing split leg hammer curls. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is the most customizable because you could have this avatar do anything, you know? You of know, course. You Jeff Hardy was showing me how to do bareback skull crushers. <laughs> yeah, don't you remember side skaters? <laughs> hey, go to 57 <laughs> side skating. Go. Go to 57 seconds on this. He starts talking. Hey, brother. Yeah, get that body bopping. Yeah, get you on your phone. So this was uh, this is actually a, a groundbreaking fitness app because if you had like a back injury, you could type that in <laughs> and then you could work out with the back injury, you know? Tell him, Tony. <laughs> I'm just telling you, man. <laughs> hey, you back's hey, been hurting. When I'm you get you. old, your back hurts. You got to do the 35 to 49 should be watching this show I, because I, this is for them. You can I put had that in there. TNA always of always a fine app. It was okay. But I had the Scott Steiner screw you app. And that shit was awesome. And I was rocking with that one. That app yeah, you to fuck the, yourself. The, the, the chicks? Yeah, with the yeah. chicks. Oh, yeah, was it was. Doing uh, bicep curls with the chicks and bumping with the chicks. And yeah, I had that one. It he wasn't was for you. Arms. It was for you to watch Scott Steiner. <laughs> I was doing that with Steiner. That was crazy. Was man. That. Yeah. That's screw awesome. you app. I had that a lot. Yeah, TNA always evolved. You can, and I'm sure that helped a lot. Yeah, you had 3G internet speeds back then. You were rocking, spending all, <laughs> spend all your data on Jeff Hardy Sadly, with Skull Crushers. It was not developed for the fourth generation iPod, so please keep that in mind. Dude, oh, no man, fucking way, What's the way, point man. then? What's the point? <laughs> Sorry, I was rocking an up. iPod video. You telling me I can't work out with Jeff? <laughs> no, man. JF, I'm trying to work out with you. Listen, in <laughs> <JF>. November. <laughs> <laughs> JF. Get your voice. There will be a, there will never be a time in this world where me and Jeff Hardy can work out in the same building ever. Dude, in November Jesus of 2013, Christ. they've 
they fixed the animation where Jeff Hardy would walk off the screen. <laughs> Jeff Hardy would leave <laughs> during your workout. <laughs> You That's wanna... incredible. <laughs> You're doing bicep curls and Jeff Hardy just leaves. Nah, I'm out of here. Oh my god. <laughs> this awesome. app sucks. These Fuck app. you. Oh, wow. Yeah, if they would have just filmed a bunch of wrestlers working out, that would have done mm. great. I don't no know way. How about this one right here, buddy? Wow. <laughs> Yeah, that's all you get, bitch. Shut up. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, Bradley's trying to take off the headgear of Joseph Park. The crowd's chanting for him. Uh, Joseph Park sweeps his legs, puts him in a Boston crab. Uh, Big pop. J- JB in Boston. Says, oh, yeah, yeah, they're not in Boston, but they love them a Boston crab. JB on commentary says, uh, uh, submission win would be huge for him. It put him right at zero. <laughs> <laughs> that's beast. That's fantastic. Jay Bradley hits a fucked up backbreaker on Joseph Park, which looked horrifying to me. I don't know what the fuck he Yeah, he like tried to get him up and then like it just won't happen. Huh? Yeah, fuck that. Pulls off his headgear and throws it at EY and then he calls for the move that's going to change his career here in TNA. Changes he's got zeros it. to Vs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that... You can't get letters in this. <laughs> <laughs> He's got it written on his fucking arm gimmick. Boomstick. The boomstick lariat, baby. He's going for I, it. I, the Evil Dead nod is cool. I like Evil Dead a lot. Bruce Campbell. Big Bruce Campbell guy. Yeah, boomstick sure. lariat. And he goes for it. And Abyss hits him. Sorry, Joseph Park hits him with a Simone drop and wins. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> Dude! <laughs> Good Jay Bradley, you got this guy Jay Bradley out here. Look, this shit was in like 240p back in the day. So all, you, all it looks like is Jay Bradley has ugly written on the back of his trunks, <laughs> and on the front it looks like it says C Nanners. So <laughs> big C Nanners guy, also ugly. C Nanners Larry, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. This guy's got to win. <laughs> He's got the boomstick, and Joseph Park beats it with a Samoan drop. Well, they call it a fallaway slam. They call oh, it a fallaway slam. The fallaway, of course, that's what the fallaway <laughs> slam, of course, that's what it always was. <laughs> Always has been. The crowd <laughs> pops huge for Joseph Park winning, though. We love this they guy. This guy's awesome. We love did him. not protect Jay Bradley even a small bit. At How no could point. They not? At no point. I almost think if I'm, I you know, for some reason I might be remembering this wrong. But was sure. Jay Bradley always meant to be in the Battle for Glory series, or did someone get hurt? And it, Jay Bradley mm. took his spot. Now, why would you say that? Because I remember for some reason Jay Bradley being put in <laughs> at the last second, and it was like a big opportunity for him. That was the angle. Is like, oh, Jay Bradley being in the Bound for Glory series is a big because uh, he won the gut stone. check. Then yeah, because he, he won gut check. Well, supposedly he won. He beat Christian York and Sam Shaw to qualify for the Bound for Glory series. So I'm not okay. sure if anything happened before that to cause him to do that, but it seems like he was okay. meant to be in it. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, obviously they wanted you to be in it so they could jabroni your ass out. <laughs> <laughs> now, hold on. Are you? Well, of course, Jay Bradley would go to lose all of his beginning matches uh, to Austin Aries, Hernandez, and Joseph Park, and then ended his participation in the tournament uh, on explosion. Uh, with oh, a no. pinfall. He beat Joseph Park, finishing 11th out of the 10 wrestlers. <laughs> <laughs> in a tie with Hernandez in the tournament. Damn, so they had Joseph Hart beat him on TV and then they said, you can get your win back on the show no one watches. On Explosion. <laughs> oh, that's crazy, man. <laughs> that's crazy. Boomstick, man. Gut Check had a lot of interesting decisions that really didn't pan out for him. No, no way. I mean... Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. I mean, Fuck really, no. historically, Gut Check. Did so he went gut well. check. It looks like he got a one year contract. Is that how that worked in gut check? You get a one year impact I deal or think whatever. That's it, it's right. even crazier because I think it was a one year deal per appearance pay. So you were, oh no! And if it doesn't air on TV, you don't get paid, right? It's some shit. Yeah. No, so it's like, even funnier. No. Do you do you know who Jay Bradley was picked over in gut check? Uh, Brian Bra- Cage. Brian Cage, you're right. Yeah, it was Brian Cage. I wow. remember that because at the time it made no sense because Brian Cage was, <laughs> was over Brian Cage was hot. Uh, he was. Yeah, PWG run was crazy. Um, everybody that was watching at the time, especially on the boards, were like, "Oh, you, you know, this is the guy." I remember yeah. I was like, "There's no," I was like, "There's no He's possible way that you can fuck this up." It's just yeah. Brian Cage. Nothing against Jay Bradley. I don't even think he's that bad. No, but, he's actually not. I'm, I mean, but, I'm fucking around, but he's actually not bad. But Brian Cage is like was money, no brainer, no, he especially was, for yeah, Impact, who is like, you know, they're getting indie guys, they're having guys do their shit. They need names that can like people can be interested in. No brainer. And he's like, he's, I mean, he's not like, he obviously gets bigger, but he was still a big fucker in 2013. Yeah. And like, he looked great. 
Yeah, yeah and he, he was did. doing some really like crazy. If you shit. really look at his work at the time, yeah, that was probably his best run definitively was that yeah. time. Yeah. So it just made no fucking sense. Um, well, Jay Bradley none. gets released one year later. Yeah, they didn't do anything yeah. with him, and like they didn't even try. <laughs> oh, <laughs> What's the point? He, he does come point? back though. Uh, under the name Aiden O'Shea. Yeah, which he is, was Irish. He was an Irish. He was Shane. You know, oh, yeah. He's back in the Bound for Gold gauntlet match. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. And then he was also in the TNA World Title Series. <laughs> if I remember correctly, do you know the gimmick that Sheamus has now? Yeah, it's him. Yes, you're right. It, it was is Hat just Aiden O'Shea. Yeah. He is you're legit right. Aiden O'Shea. You are. Um, wow. And also, um, he, like I said, he's in the NWA now. Um, where he's in like the do fixers. I think he's with Colby. I think he's with Colby Green. Oh was my with god, Colby is he Carino. really? Yeah. yeah. That's sick. Well, <laughs> shouts out. And Jay I think Bradley. they're with Wrecking Ball Ligurski. <laughs> they are. You're doing Wrecking Ball Ligurski. Heard a lot about that Wrecking Ball Ligurski. Pretty good, Wrecking Ball. Pretty good. Hey, what do you, you guys like Wrecking Ball Ligurski? <laughs> yeah. That's the guy right there, man. Fucking Wrecky Ball Ligurski. I can't wait for our We Don't Give a Fuck era of DPW where we just get on the mic after matches. What do you think of those fucking <laughs> Carolinas? That's what we should have done at the armory, just sitting up there like Zandig. <laughs> hey, you guys thought that match was pretty good? What do you think? That'd been awesome. We, we gotta have Nadia just say that one time and go in the ring. <laughs> What'd you think of that one? <laughs> pretty good, huh, Durham? <laughs> So we go to uh, a graphic that says, tonight, what will the offer be? And it shows the Main Event Mafia logo as well as the Aces and Eights logo. And the Main Event Mafia logo is now 3D'd out of its mind, and it's insane looking. It's crazy. <laughs> Aces and Eights, not 3D. No, not 3D and not, yeah, weird. <laughs> Whatever. We go backstage. The Main Event Mafia are chilling. Uh, and <laughs> Magnus, for some reason, is back here. <laughs> Blood, he's in the group, James. What do you mean? Blood thinks he's in the main of the mafia. <laughs> <laughs> he is in the group. Damn it. <laughs> he just keeps following him around. He's not actually in the group. <laughs> Hey guys, what's going just, on? They don't fucking bother with it. This hour, he just come along. Holy shit, man! Sting, Sting is out of his mind. Sting is crazy. Sting, no face paint. He's just, you know, he's Steve Borden here with the glasses. That is Sting. <laughs> he says, "We know why we put this group together for two things, and one of them we did. Bully Ray is no longer champion." <laughs> 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 it's sorry about that. Sorry, did we? Crazy. He says, and the second thing is we're gonna have to make some sacrifices. And he looks right at Magnus. <laughs> <laughs> Take off the glasses. Magnus is just sitting there. What the <laughs> fuck is this guy doing out here? He says, everyone ready to take the risk? And Kurt <laughs> says, we're gonna give the Aces and Aids an offer they can't refuse. We know, Kurt. Who we fucking that? know <laughs> the offer thing. And Rampage uh, says, I came here to fight. And I don't know if he was supposed to say that because he says, I came here to fight. And everyone's quiet, and Sting looks at him, he says, well, that's why we like you. <laughs> <laughs> Red Page is saying shit. All right, so now it's time for Manic versus Chris Sabin. Non-title match, but both are the are champions. Champion versus champion, champion, champion no title. Yes. Your top two singles champions are in the middle of the card. They are, and for why? Because Chris Sabin wanted to wrestle him. Why? Because. Because they're they the didn't same. even bill it. There was no, like, big graphic or anything as a champion no. versus champion they never even brought it up again actually it was just no um but he's not suicide by the way he's manic manic when did do they make does that change happen in 2013 i don't remember does he like he because he comes back as manic right he's not like he comes back with the big m on his chest right isn't that what happens yeah i think he's gone for okay he's gone for two years and then he comes back uh and then he Starts wrestling as manic. <laughs> there was a there was a uh, there was a YouTuber at the time, um, buddy of mine. His name was Wiza. You remember him? Uh, yeah, Wiza now. Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, and he, I, I thought he used to crack up. He was like, "What the fuck is a manic?" They <laughs> <laughs> watched TNA at the Holy time. There was like shit. a group of us that watched TNA at the time, and we were like yeah. the only people on YouTube that were covering no one it fucking at the time. Did. Yeah. yeah. Man. Oh, okay. So Aries stole the OG suicide gear and then Perkins started wrestling as Manic, which was a modified version of the outfit. Uh, they didn't really it. 
Yeah, it's instead of M's. <laughs> so Saban and Manicure, but for, through the first commercial break, they were fucking cooking. They're rocking here, man. They're doing crazy shit, man. Cause like jumping from the ground onto Saban's shoulders and sunsetting them. They're do, they do the RVD Jerry Lynn standoff. They're whoop. They're going very cool shit. And the crowd's reacting. This is a big deal. It's the fucking world champ and the Eggs champ. You know, like this is a big deal. Chris Saban looks insanely like Buddy Murphy. Yeah, he's even got the. I mean, yeah, this you're is right. same gear, same, same gear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I never, I never saw it until you said that. <laughs> crazy. Um, Chris Saban is. He's timeless, I think. I, I he's so doesn't matter good. what era you get saved in. He's yeah, just you're right. good. So fucking good, man. Um, I don't know how difficult it is to wrestle in the manic gear. I assume it's not fun. I, assume it sucks, I imagine yeah. any mask is difficult, let alone full body suit and mask. Yeah. But he's still rocking here. He's, he does the fucking La Mystica. Uh, he does the handstand in the corner and then gets fucking inzied on the corner. Uh, they're going crazy here. Manic does a sit out, a scoop up sit out power bomb, which was gnarly. <laughs> Earl Hebner uh, said, "I am not counting that." Fuck yeah, he that. Did that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, I don't have any recollection of Saban doing this move and calling it the Hail Saban. I don't know why I don't remember that. I don't either. Oh the cross yeah, the cross leg driver. Uh, yeah, it's like it. Yeah, cross leg fucking Michinoku, which is awesome. But I just don't remember the it being Hail called the Hail Saban. Saban. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Saban hits a misdirection cutter and then a kneeling super kick and then hits the Hail Saban uh, for the win. Now, I, this match was fucking fun as hell. Yeah, I was. think both dudes look, looked awesome, but I don't understand why they did it. And Manic just won the title and he's already lost. Well, here's why. Uh, the X title was very much positioned as the number two belt. Sure. They didn't even try to hide it. So much so that you could give up the title for a title shot yeah, at you're the right. world title. <laughs> yeah, so at the time, you could you could genuinely, every year at Destination X, if you were the X champion, cash in the belt and go for the world title. Right. Like cash so in was, as in you give up the belt. You don't want this anymore. I don't want this title. <laughs> um, and that is something they kept for a long time. Option sure. C, that's what it was. Option that's C. That's what Aries did. Aries, Aries did that. Aries did it for the angle with Rude. Uh, and and it, it turned stop. out great, and it was fucking awesome. Yeah. It should have been a one-time, like, I agree. call it a fucking day. Uh, it did not It did not last one no, time. It, it lasted not. many no, times. No, no. Oh, I like that idea, dude. Give up this title. It yeah, sucks. give up the Jabroni <laughs> title, dude. <laughs> 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 so uh, the X title was very much positioned at number two. So in their head, saving beating Manic makes a lot of sense because why would sure, number oh, two be number one? Um, and in the fans' mind... The match happening at all is what I don't understand. <laughs> Why yeah. even put him in a situation to lose like that? Um, because he's a little jabroni dude. <laughs> <laughs> you're fucking totally right. You're right. I don't know why I didn't think of that. That's, right. At no point did they care about protecting the manic. No um, the way. Ex, His the gimmick was, I suck. <laughs> <laughs> the X Division guys were very much, uh, you guys are going to do Ultimate X whenever we ask you to do it, and then whatever else happens, Fuck we off. do not care. Yeah, once a year, you'll have your stinky little show, and then you go to hell. Yeah, pretty much exactly what it was. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so Bully Ray comes in during the replay and attacks Chris Saban. Which is awesome. They, they cut back, and I'm like, whoa, what the fuck? Bully Ray is in Abercrombie bootcut jeans. <laughs> yeah, he was. <laughs> he's also got, he's also got a chain. <laughs> yeah, well, the chain was like, so Bully Ray His had gimmick. two things, the chain and a ball peen hammer later on. Ball peen hammer <laughs> oh, is legendary. The ball peen hammer. Oh, uh, Nux ball brought, hammer. I think Nux or something, Nux. Gallows might have been, <laughs> Nux or Gallows brought in the it ball peen hammer. with the ball peen yeah. hammer, yeah. Crazy, man. Um, uh, yeah, Manic tries to stop him from beating up Saban, but Bully just whoops his ass too. Because he's a jabroni Saban brother. Saban starts lighting up Bully Ray. <laughs> yeah, just fuck you, man. <laughs> You're a jabroni, don't touch me. Uh, <laughs> Get the little jabroni out of here, dude. <laughs> make sure you, when you go out there, Bully, make sure to whoop that little jabroni ass. <laughs> I know you had to attack Chris Saban, dude, but fucking I know you got a power, beat him so we're up. Gonna give you, yeah, beat up little jabroni over there. <laughs> I don't know his name. <laughs> I don't know his name. <laughs> you see any little jabronis in the ring, you beat him up. <laughs> All right, dude. <laughs> Brother, you fuck my daughter. Too. Anyone under six feet, you whoop their ass, brother. You understand? So Saban gets up, starts lighting up Bully Ray, and bumps him with an enziguri, Bully powders, and then starts screaming, in a cage, in a cage. He just won't stop yelling in the cage on the stage. He just won't stop. Uh, yeah, and that's it. So uh, Bully Ray versus Chris Saban in a cage match. Uh, uh, Hardcore Justice, two weeks from yes. this show. Free on um, Spike Television. 
free. Yeah. Good ma- it's actually a good match. Um, <laughs> and they do some good work. Bully was, yeah. this is Bully's best run ever. Does yeah, Bully was. win the title back there or no? Um, this was the Brooke Hogan, uh, something with the wedding. I can't remember the finish exactly. Oh, uh, right. Um, okay. But it was something with the wedding or, you know what I mean? Or- Bully does win. The main event was a steel cage match in which Saban defended the title. Near the end of the match, the referee was knocked out by Saban and Bully Ray. Saban hit a missile dropkick on Bully and then tried to escape, but Mr. Anderson interfered and hit him with the cage door. Rampage Jackson and Tito Ortiz interfered to counter Anderson's interference, and then Jackson attacked Anderson, during which Ortiz turned on Jackson by hitting him with the ball peen hammer! Oh my god. Oh my god. Which distracted Saban, and Bully hit the bully bomb for the win. Holy shit. <laughs> Tito Ortiz as crazy as that mates. sounds, I remember it being a fun match. So you, we, yeah, I'm sure. We should maybe check that out. That'd be the ball cool. Yeah, we, we, can, we can do that on uh, Patreon. Uh, so we go backstage after this. The limo is chilling outside still. Yes. And guess who comes <laughs> by? <laughs> Brother. <laughs> hey. Taz walks up and he says, hey, you shoot me. Not that. Hogan won't let me into work. I'm going to expose the world. August 1, because I'm pissed off about this. I can't be with my brothers. That's what he said. <laughs> my brothers. <laughs> Y'all can't be my brothers. You got me in this Africa heat. Let's see what everyone's talking about. He said he got me in the Africa heat, 5,000 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> So he opens the door of the Hummer. He says, and he looks inside. He says, are you kidding me? He starts laughing. This is the hype. This gets the big white Hummer. Let's show the world. <laughs> and the camera pans in and it's a laptop. And I think the laptop was just playing the video from earlier. No. Yeah. And they didn't like edit the sound in or anything. You, just, you can't hear yeah. anything. You don't know what's going on. I hear. No, you just, I'm, I imagine he says you will get throttled. <laughs> <laughs> Or frog splash. You will be frog splash tonight. Or drop. Or drop throttle the frog splash. Or three. You're getting frog splash. Throttle splashed. dropped and frog splash. That's his finish. style. You're dead. <laughs> you're dead. Uh, so James Storm is now live tweeting Impact for the second hour. Get out your mobile devices because the Cowboys live tweeting the second hour of Impact. Also, they showed shots of ODB and Gail Kim walking through the backstage, which I always like. Yeah, those are cool. I do like those. Yeah. Um, right Backstage, Daniels with his apple martini. Yes, him and Kazarian, uh, because they announced that, as voted by you on ImpactWrestling.com, Daniels would be taking on Kazarian in the Bound for Glory series Ooh. match. Well, you know that's not going to fucking work because they're tag team partners. Damn it! How could? Why would they vote on this? Why'd you vote for that, Tony? I'm you sorry, bitch. man. I love it. I want to no see him. Daniels, see okay. Daniels says it doesn't make any fucking sense. I have 21 points and Taz is zero and three. <laughs> he is right though. He is right. And he says there's agenda. You know, Impact Management has that out against us. And uh, Kaz says that's not bad influence. That's bad management. And that's a shoot, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Daniels says, yeah, I'm undefeated, man. Poor Frankie here is zero and three. And Kaz says, you know, I know you're that guy, but don't be that guy to me. <laughs> <laughs> just... Daniel says, you think I'm just going to give you these points? Kaz says, you're not going to give me them. I'm going to, I'm going to take them. And then he pours out Daniel's drinks, and he says, you you better be at your best. And Daniel's is very upset about this. Dude, I love that line. The fucking line he hit was the, the bad influence one. That's not yeah. bad influence. That's bad management. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, that was like my favorite line the whole episode, I think. <laughs> he like looked at the camera afterwards and just hit the Seinfeld music or something. Wink. Yeah. So we have ODB versus Gail Kim in singles action up next. They explain here that Taryn turned in a ref shirt, and ODB has been problem-solving knockouts referee. And Brooke Hogan said that ODB is still an active wrestler. Now, I believe Brooke Hogan is Not in charge Brooke of the Hogan. knockouts. Yeah, she is. She is in charge she of the is. knockouts. Yeah. In charge right. of the knockouts. <laughs> Which. There was. Dude, just. Right. <laughs> <laughs> there was just like. I, 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 I for very vividly. Because I reviewed this show every single week. Every yeah. single week I did TNA reviews. And I very sure. vividly remember this era of. Brooke Hogan as the fucking knockouts general manager and holy and the Tito Ortiz thing and then the fucking not signing Brian Cage and then yeah it was real fucking there was so much so much bullshit going on at this point man (laughs) it was crazy um so ODB versus Gail Kim here Gail Kim has uh since she came back to CNA has been positioned as the top knockout because she is the top knockout she is fucking awesome oh by the way Brooke is gone this same month, I think. She's gone in August 16th. <laughs> yeah, it's time to leave. Time to get out of here. <laughs> so Gail yeah, Kim Gail is, is awesome, so man. far and beyond. Yeah, she's like way up top. She's gotten so good over the years. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is just goes just goes to show where we were at. Like back then, like WWE couldn't find anything for her, which is like insane. Uh, just because she's so, so good. 
Yeah. Um, but ODB also is very over, and she's fucking good too. Uh, ODB does the Muda line, but with her titties in this one. That, that was is awesome. so <laughs> sick. <laughs> That's crazy. ODB then invents the Seamus chest attack. In yes, the she yeah, she just starts she doing does. stuff. <laughs> uh, Gail goes up top at some point with ODB and knocks ODB down, and then starts taunting to the crowd, and then just jumps down from the ropes and yeah, walks over and stops ODB. I think some got fucked up there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened there. Now, Gale is on the outside here. The referee probably should have been counting already. Uh, so he starts to count. ODB goes to the floor. The referee continues counting. And then he counts to 10. And double count out. No winner. Crowd booze. Crowd, oh, crowd's yeah. not happy. They say that on the mic, like too. This. Ain't no winner. <laughs> <laughs> Let him know. Let him know. Yeah, really. <laughs> um, shout out to Gail Kim and Taryn Terrell. I think I was slam reversary like next Ooh, year or something. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. crazy. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Yeah. That was like an all time like knockout match, period. Yeah. Um, why, why is it where they, I feel like that it's, it's very obvious. I don't know if that's just TV wrestling or not, but like, I feel like it's very easy to tell when there's going to be a double count out because the referee, I don't know if the referees get nervous or what, but their cadence picks up very quick. <laughs> they, the, the quickest 10 counts ever are when there's a fucking count out or double count out. Cause it's a lot of, a lot of attention on them, you know? Yeah. Like you're, like, you're calling it. Sure. Yeah. Just do it normal. <laughs> Just do it fucking <laughs> how you always do. Six. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I like the matches got time tonight. That was kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, all the, all the none of them felt like long. I mean, Jay Bradley got fucking time. Yeah, you're, you're right. right. Yeah. Um. So we go backstage. AJ Styles is brooding in the back. <laughs> He's got the hood up. <laughs> He's everybody talking about a dream match. This hasn't happened between AJ Styles and Aries. This is all BS. Dream matches. When I wrestled Jeff Hardy, it was all BS as what far as dream hell? matches go. It was all crap. What, what the hell? Why you say that? Shitty ass <laughs> match. I hate Jeff Hardy. Fuck Jeff Hardy. So you know what they say? If you Try can't, to take food off my kids' table. Fuck you. <laughs> Talk about my Jeff Hardy. <laughs> uh, you better get a clue around here. <laughs> we did. I'm me, about to leave. Joe, and Chris Van, we did not make our fucking name in here for you to come in and ruin it like that. I know you're not going to pay me, and I feel it coming. You're not paying me a lot more than I should be paid. I'm out. I'm not even downloading your shitty app. <laughs> I ain't mo capping shit. I love video games and I hate yours. My kid is not playing this shit. I'm gonna tell you that. <laughs> I don't even know if my kid can afford it because you're taking money off our my, table. My kid is not coming to these shows. They suck. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the angle of Jeff Hardy? Who is it? Jeff Hardy and Kurt Angle or something? Why's your kid wearing my armbands? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That was crazy. That's awesome. That was crazy. Uh, AJ says, you know what they say if you can't beat them, join them. The Bound for Glory series is about the title, and it's about the money that goes with it. Dreams, there's no place for them. Just like heroes and tonight, Austin Aries, I become your nightmare. And he throws the hood up. <laughs> and he walks Fuck off. your dreams. <laughs> Fuck your life. Yeah. They said what, that line what, earlier. Yeah, Bobby Roode did that nightmare line earlier. earlier. Come on. Well, everybody's line. wearing black hoodies. <laughs> Why? Well, I'm watching a Bobby Roode fucking promo. I'm watching. You think I'm watching a promo? You think I'm watching his show? You ain't paying me to wrestle. Oh, you're, right, show, you're, right, you're right. You're right. You're right. Bro, Show. Fuck you, man. My kid Trying to take shit on my kid's table? <laughs> you try to shit on my kid's face? Trying to fucking do this shit? You do it, you know my job? Get out of this company! <laughs> they took our dreams. <laughs> King Mo won on Bellator. All right. TNA's King Mo gets a light heavyweight title <laughs> shot Bellator. <laughs> Tony. All right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> August uh, one warning also said you don't know when and you don't know how. But I'm a frog splash you and <laughs> throttle you. King Mo is here to throttle you. Backstage, <laughs> Bully says the main event mafia has seen Godfather one too many times. That's Wait, true. true. That's all Kurt Angle said Pippin all Pippin night. Pippin Easy, man. This is very ironic because they're sitting yeah. there in Sons of Anarchy cosplay. Yeah, it's not the same thing. <laughs> uh, Bully says, I'm obsessing over Chris Saban and Harco Justice and destroying both of his knees and getting my title back. And tonight, Chris Saban Anderson, was out with a knee injury. Yes, he right. Back. So he's going back to his knees. He says, Mr. Anderson, you are in charge and take care of the main event mafia. Get the job done, Mr. Vice President. And Anderson uh, says, okay. And Brooke Hogan comes in and says, I was just looking for you. And Bully Ray says, oh, you want to go under the bleaches for a while? Or are you going to ask for that divorce you're never, ever going to get? No, I'm and trying to quit, actually. I'm trying to leave. Does, <laughs> is, is Bully Ray's name Mark? Or did she call him a Mark? That's his name. No, she called, okay. she called him a Mark. Mark Calvin. <laughs> you wrestling Marks. <laughs> she said, Mark, you might want to rethink that. You know that magic Chris Saban and that contract you're going to have to sign? I, I didn't know about this contract thing. 
I heard some things about it that might be in your favor, but you not you might not want to be on my bad list. You know what that saying goes? Happy wife, happy life. Well, this time it'll be happy ex-wife, happy life. <laughs> Yeah, I really. I don't even, I'll let you read what I wrote. Look, this is what I wrote. Okay. Said. You can read that oh, loud. No. All right. James says, Brooke says, whatever, I don't know. What is she doing here? Get out of my company. <laughs> Go. Get away. Get don't worry. She's out. gone very soon. <laughs> what the fuck, man? Oh, yeah, you know what they say about the blah, blah. But, uh, shut up. Happy life. Stop talking. <laughs> You know, it makes a lot of sense, Mark, James, if you really think about it. Happy ex-wife. Happy I mean, life. really, well, she's spitting here. If you would really just sit down and think about it, James, you would know. I can't. I have a lot of stuff I got to do in the house. You know menial what? tasks. Uh, menial tasks on. are taking over. You know, she's heard some things about that contract, you know. She's heard some I have things. a wife, and I have to worry about her, and I can't worry about you. <laughs> You're trying to take Brooke Hogan off my table. <laughs> <laughs> you trying to take Brooke Hogan out of his house? <laughs> you trying to you trying to take you trying to take my daughter out of this company, dude. <laughs> no, man. Next week, by the way, Bound for Glory series as voted by the fans, Smoke Joe against Jeff Hardy and Daniels versus Kazarian. And of course, what the fans have been asking for, Ken Anderson against Magnus. <laughs> well, there that you must go. Have been, they must have ran out of options. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the only two left. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Next up, Austin Aries versus AJ Styles. The main event brought to you by Five Hour Energy. Be clear and alert for hours... Damn it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> In the line. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Get your damn energy. Get the energy now. <laughs> you will be energized, I swear to my mother. Uh, Bound for Glory series, AJ against Aries. AJ coming out to Evil Ways. He's got the shirt on, and he looks awesome. This guy's awesome. I can't even believe, like, I can't even believe this is, he's about to leave TNA. He's, he's very soon gone, Dude, right? that's crazy. Yeah, he's about to get out of here. Which is, and he's on, he goes on the run of a lifetime. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> he does. He like starts a run that like defines his career, which is even crazier. It's, it's fucking unbelievable. Oh my God. They offered him a contract that reduced his salary about 60%. Yeah. And he said, no, nope, how do you way. not see that? This, <laughs> how do you not see that? This is the guy. I don't know how you don't, how do you miss that? He became a free agent on December 17th, ending his near 12 I'll never years forget the AJ the Styles shoot interview. Where yeah, he said the, nothing and it was just very nice and he was a very nice guy about everything. Yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a few good TNA things in it, but yeah. It's, it's yeah. Mo I mean, most of it was stuff that he says in his TNA shoots. He's like, yeah, I don't, yeah. I think the ship man management was fucking terrible. You know? Yeah. Not good. He yeah. says that in his like wrestling. He's like, I will manage it was better around here than guys like us would be fucking on top of the car, but we're yeah, not. He, you're right. Those were the problems he's cutting every week. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're trying to kill my kid. <laughs> <laughs> my kid wants to work out, and I gotta fucking have this guy on this fucking app. He only has the fourth generation iPod, and you won't let him evolve. <laughs> that's why this company's in the damn mud. Can't do nothing here, and that's why I'm going to Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck your dreams. Fuck your life. Uh, so, Aries versus Styles here, man. Fucking, uh, they have a great this match. Awesome. It's a very, very good match. Yeah, um, whatever. Log on right now and follow TNA Dixie. <laughs> yeah. She's tweeting. Right at the bottom of the screen. Look at Dixie's tweet. She's wow. tweeting. Uh, Aries and Styles go for their submission stuff early. Calf killer, last chance, Aries Styles shit. Very cool stuff I, here. I think AJ introduced the calf killer in this series yeah. because he wanted more points. That yeah, you're beast. right. Like, <laughs> he was yeah, awesome. submission yeah. victories in this, right? Wasn't cool as fuck. Yeah, um, yeah. So there was a really cool superplex in this match where uh, they Dude, reverse out yes. of it. AJ does. And he holds on which uh, none of this makes any sense to me because this it's is all crazy. very difficult yes. superplex reversal hits the ground lands on his feet aries is still on the rope he does holding the, him does the devon dudley neck breaker off the second yeah fucking yeah. awesome yeah that was sick as fuck i love that shit man i, I wrote weird but cool <laughs> <laughs> it was very cool styles goes for the 450 aries moves out of the way I used to love like he would go for the last chancery and he would do the north south knees before Those he would go odd. to it. He would throw the knees and then go into last chancery was money. Yeah. Um, but Sal said, "Fuck that cool. shit. I'm higher. I'm higher. <laughs> fuck, your, fuck, your, fuck your eyes, man. He yeah. raked his eyes and Aries held on through more knees. AJ fucking caught him with the calf killer. Grinds his forearm on AJ's face to get out of it, and then fucking Aries hooks him and drops him with a fucking brain buster for a two point <laughs> nine to nine to nine nine. Aries goes for the four fifty. AJ gets the knees up." Uh, and then fucking AJ 
goes to springboard to the ramp from the inside, but then Aries bumps the ropes and like AJ bumps on the top. Uh, AJ then front suplexes fucking Aries on the stage, goes to Styles Clash Aries off the stage, and then gets <laughs> backdropped off the stage. <laughs> yeah, right. That was awesome, dude. It could have, it could have, yeah, it could have fucking ended his whole shit. I mean, yeah, what a what a risk. That was crazy. Yeah, yeah really. that was nuts. Aries goes for the fucking heat-seeking missile, fucking, you know, low pay, I guess some may call it. AJ moves, and Aries fucking hits the stairs. Dude, that was insane. First. I don't think I've ever seen that. That was, like, incredible. That was, again, another, like, uh, that could have... Yeah, one really wrong way, he would have been done, dude. They're just throwing fucking shots here. This is aw- lighting each other up. AJ's going for his crazy-ass combo. Aries ducks the lariat. Fucking backdrop drivers AJ, then a rolling elbow... And- Kills him with it. Then AJ fucking hits him with a Pele. I'm flipping out. <laughs> yeah, this is awesome, man. What a great ending segment there. Dude, oh, by the way, earlier in the match at one point, AJ fucking annihilates Ares with a fucking dragon suplex. Just dumps him on his shit. I said, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really. Doing? That was awesome. They're both fucking down. Uh, both guys cover each other. Double count. And then right at the last second, Ares just, just barely like rolls his shoulder up and gets the fucking win, which I thought was a real cool finish, but I think the crowd was confused and didn't really Yeah, they didn't get it. They thought it, it was like a flash or something. Yeah. Yeah. But I was like, oh, that's so cool. Like, it was a great visual for TV, but I yeah. guess like, people in the crowd were like, what the fuck? Yeah, what the like hell it. just happened? Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, this was a very good match. I thought this was fucking fun, man. This is dope. I'm very not event. surprised that this was a very good match. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I always, really? it, it almost kind of sucks that they had to kind of do this here because I think they could have, I mean, especially with how things play out, with both these guys over the next few years, it's like damn. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm glad, I'm glad you get it. I mean, you get it again. Uh, like a month. Yeah. When or two do they later. do it again? It, it it was like pretty soon after this. They do it. Um, no surrender. They do it again. Yeah, that match was actually. I remember that being very, very good. So, um. Well, according to Meltzer, it wasn't as good as this one. So <laughs> really, he thought the he thought no surrender was worse than this. <laughs> yeah, one? Yeah. Uh, he gave this one four, and he gave the other one three and three quarters. Oh, well, that's. I mean that's inter- <laughs> interchangeable. Yeah, if you're in, if you're you in breathe a, a different way. If you're yeah. in a half star, like it don't matter. It's the same yeah, match. No. So both, I mean, I, I, I got to check out that other one because I don't remember the no surrender one. Yeah, that was I remember that being good, especially because the stage and shit. Like it was the pay per view setting. So sure, kind of more interesting. Yeah, but good match here. Fucking fantastic main event. Bound for Glory series set you up with a lot of cool matches like this. Yeah, um, sure. I think if they would have maybe thought through a different spot i'm sure they weren't thinking like oh tv or uh, people in the crowd won't the be crowd. able to get this yeah um yeah. but it don't matter they still killed it so classic tna having banger ass matches oh, and then no. they go let's <laughs> fuck it all up <laughs> we can't end hot we cannot end hot <laughs> holy shit man we what if they just what if they just went up? home yeah what if they just went home after that match no like oh way. look at that aries gets seven points in the bound for glory series and we're gonna continue on next week yeah, oh yeah, that's TNA. 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 Hang uh, uh, motherfucker well, there you go so main event mafia is coming to the ring and they're in the ring, and Kurt Angle has the USA glasses on. <laughs> oh, he's, he changed the glasses. I feel like they were not USA at first. I think they might have been, but oh, okay. I, I would not be surprised. Uh, Sting says, "Back in June, we put the main event mafia back together. Wants to get rid of, bu- uh, wants uh, to get one to get rid of Bully Ray as champion, which we were successful at, and two is to get rid of aces and eights. And we're halfway there, and we didn't get the fight we wanted last time, and we want that fight, and we're gonna give you an offer." That you can't refuse. Fuck, stop saying that. What do you guys watch? The Godfather? <laughs> <laughs> so Kurt takes the mic and he looks around and he's looking around. And he keeps looking. He won't stop looking he around. Keeps looking. <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking at, man? Oh, you're waiting for the theme to hit. Here comes the Aces and Eights. <laughs> so Aces and Eights comes out here and all the stars are here Ken Anderson, Devon, Garrett Bischoff, Doc Gallows. West Briscoe. <laughs> All the stars the are boys. here. The boys are back in town, they say. <laughs> this is the craziest group of dudes I've ever seen. <laughs> Ken Anderson's, you didn't get the fight you wanted? That's because Kurt Angle ended up in the back of a pickup truck. You remember that guy? You remember the pickup truck? Just asking the guys in his group, do you remember? Do you remember what we did? Yeah, that was he. I remember. I remember. Uh, you guys cheat. It's the only reason why Saban's world champion. You, you want to fight dirty? We can do dirty. We're not backing down. And Kurt says, you're not going to back down? There's going to be some serious consequences. And what I'm talking about is a five-on-five match. Any member of Aces and Eights 
against the main event mafia August 15th in Norfolk, Virginia. And while it's going to be hard, did you see this match? What match? You must have, right? This 5 on 5? I did. Match. I did see this oh, Okay. Match. Yeah, yeah, Did I it did. suck? Uh, <laughs> Do you remember it all? Uh, let me think. <laughs> Who wins? Who loses? Right loses. Oh, you know what? It was, I remember loses. it um, because I, it was, I got to see Samoa Joe. Sure, okay. That's fair. And I, was, and I was like, oh, I get to chair for Samoa Joe. And I was like, oh, that's, that's awesome. Um, I, did, I did not care about any of this match. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kurt says, while it's going to be hardcore justice for Bully Ray, it's going to be the end of a wrestler's career because whoever gets pinned in that five-on-five -five match will have to leave TNA for good. So this is the offer they can't refuse. And it's because it's an offer they can't refuse because Samoa Joe says this is not a negotiation. What and the And then they hell? all just start fighting. How is yeah. that? <laughs> what? That's not a negotiation. Do you not know how offers <laughs> work? You. What the hell? No, they're in TNA. Yeah, no. So they all start fighting. Man and my mom people just stomped them out. They all powder. And Andrew says, you want it? You got it. We accept. So they just they just fucking accept the match. All right, cool. And then the lights go out. Oh, that's why you ominous, hear it. The crowd's ominous freaking music out. Plays. Yeah, everyone's like, oh shit, oh shit. The music plays, and then and then Tito Ortiz just walks out on the stage. Doesn't Tito even. Just, there's no hesitation. <laughs> no wait. No, Tito no. Ortiz just walks out of the stage. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Mike today legit says, "What the hell?" <laughs> I think Mike today says, uh, "This is hashtag August one warning. It's been answered." August one warning. Identity revealed. That's his that's wrestling the name. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what he says. Identity revealed. Question mark. Question mark. Question mark. <laughs> yeah, as the MMA legend Tito Ortiz. Tito Ortiz walks on the stage. Crowd couldn't be any more confused. <laughs> They could not dun, figure out what dun, this was. Dun, this dude dun, is a dun, smacked dun. ass. You know what he is? He doesn't even have the hair. He just bald. <laughs> this is not the Huntington Why Beach bad boy. This is the Huntington Beach big baby. Out here Bitch boy. with his watch. Man, He's out here. if you don't gonna... get your ass on that stage. <laughs> He's out here in his shirt. He's just in his shirt. Punishment. Uh, you Anderson bitch. Said, oh, no, no, he no. Ken Anderson. All he does is makes, stand there. Oh. He stands there. Ken Anderson has career defining moments in this <laughs> He's one. He's scratching segment. his head. <laughs> he scratches the back of his head. He, they show his face. It can't stop cutting to Ken Anderson. He's doing that. Sting you know has that, a, that pose that fans do when like Undertaker lost a streak where they put their hands on their head? Like, it's like that that's pose. That's what Ken Anderson Yeah, that's what he's doing. doing. Sting has a poggers face on. <laughs> this is fucked up, man. Tito Ortiz crosses his arms. Everyone is confused. The crowd's not reacting. Rampage up. puts his hands in the air. Ken Anderson won't stop emoting. Scratching the back of his head. He's oh, still oh, scratching okay. it the whole time. Tito still arms crossed. And then the show just ends. <laughs> That's it. It's the most uncomfortable last like two minutes ever of TV. It is. Maybe. And there's been a lot of debuts in pro wrestling, shocking debuts and, and hyped up mystery people in pro wrestling. This is the worst shit ever. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is, is horse shit. This is rough. He just walks out and just <laughs> everyone is gonna, people in the ring don't even know how to sell it. They're this like, what the rough, fuck? Bro. Where's his hair? <laughs> Uh, so let, going back yeah. to the, <laughs> going back to the <laughs> as a sting said. <laughs> 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 they haven't seen this guy all day. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck is that? Is this right? <laughs> is this... Oh, this guy got no ears. <laughs> this is fr Frito or cheese. Who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. That is oh. crazy. That's the only uh, thing I remember from this. DNA! <laughs> DNA! <laughs> <laughs> so going back to the uh, observer oh. notes here. Uh, oh my god, yeah. <laughs> August 8th, uh, Figure 4 Weekly, Tito signed a deal with Bellator. Uh, and will face Rampage in the main uh, event of the company's first ever pay-per-view on November 2nd. No, he won't. Ortiz, 
a lot of teases <laughs> coming off an ACL replacement just 12 weeks ago, which is completely insane. So one can only hope that something doesn't go wrong and they lose their main event. Ortiz also debuted on Impact the next night as the mystery August Warning Man that they have promoted strictly <laughs> oh, on the what internet. The fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, man. That they promoted strictly on the internet. <laughs> During a conference call, it was noted that both Rampage and Tito will, will be involved in a storyline on Impact that is going to help push the pay-per-view. <laughs> then, the August 12th Observer, at the end of the show, with the main event Mafia and Aces and Nates brawling, the lights went on, or uh, went on, suddenly walking down the ramp was Ortiz. Unlike when Jackson debuted, which had been promoted, and there was a huge live reaction, and it came across as he was a superstar, for Ortiz, arguably a bigger star in MMA, there was no reaction of all. Part of it was that he had his head shaved. <laughs> oh, man. No. <laughs> he had his shaved head instead of his trademark dyed blonde oh, hair. Most people God. likely had no idea who he oh, was. Holy oh, shit, man. <laughs> You're right. That's <laughs> fucked up. The angle got an immediately and almost universal negative reaction. MMA people didn't like the idea of a pro wrestling storyline created MMA match, even though many MMA storylines are also created. Pro wrestling fans resented another MMA fighter with no pro wrestling background on the show whether tna which does have a 1.0 to 1.5 million people watching weekly but hasn't been able to convert all but a minuscule percentage who buys pay-per-views will be able to create a storyline that will help an mma show is questionable the pay-per-view crossover between mma fans and tna fans can be debated forever the only thing this year has proven is that battle tour did 808 thousand viewers from 10 p.m to 12 30 a.m on thursday after impact on average in spring uh then without a tna lead-in they did 48 480,000 viewers on uh, June 19th uh, for a normal show with King Mo. <laughs> that is crazy. Uh, Tito, by the way, just to follow up, uh, next week, Tito uh, does an in-ring promo, and he says, listen, I know a lot of people have a lot of questions, people in, uh, all over the world, and I don't have many answers. <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> and then Kurt Angle interrupts him. <laughs> Holy shit, Fuck. man. Fuck you, man. What the Holy hell? Shit. Uh, oh. Ortiz re returned uh, the week after to explain his reason for being in the TNA, but it was interrupted by Kurt Angle, who declared his respect for Ortiz, and later Bully Ray, who declared his disrespect for both. And then at Hardcore Justice, Ortiz was picked by Ram by Rampage Jackson to sub in for Kurt Angle in the main event Mafia, because Kurt uh, had some stuff going on. I think he may have got arrested. To take on Aces and Eights, which Ortiz left up in the air before... He was again interrupted and insulted by Bully Ray. Then during the main event, Ortiz turned on J Rampage by hitting him with a hammer and helped Bully Ray win the title. <laughs> the week after that, Ortiz officially joined Aces and Eights. And then at TNA No Surrender, it was announced that Bellator MMA had pulled Ortiz from TNA programming due to his fight with Rampage, and he removed him from Aces and Eights, and then he left TNA. <laughs> <laughs> that is fucking insane. What the hell? <laughs> fucking Does hell, Does that fight man. even happen? <laughs> Let me see. That no, is I don't fucking think. insane. I don't yeah, wait. That doesn't even happen. No, yeah, it doesn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> That's fucking Elator awesome. style. That's wow. so that was uh T that was Tito Ortiz's entire run in, in, uh, <laughs> in If you want to call it that. Yeah. <laughs> wow, holy fuck. Yeah, what an well, episode. It all, it all worked out for Ortiz, man. He, you know, legend and he's fucking he fucking win yeah, and right. then Bellator. He, beat, he beat alberto del rio in a fight before yeah, that was his go. last fight i think yeah. oh wow he, he beat him by submission and then he yeah. lost to anderson silva in a boxing fight. well <laughs> there you go there you go that was the august 1st 2013 august edition. one warning august one warning and uh that is it so the thank you for joining you're us gonna get throttled and frog splashed <laughs> get frog splashed <laughs> august it's, one it's, style Dude, if Tito had the hair and did the throttle frog splash, <laughs> things would be different. That, wrestling would have changed forever, man. But sadly, it's that's not what we got. But uh, thank you all for joining us. Make sure to check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash deadlockpw. We got a lot of shit on there. And make sure to check out our actual pro wrestling company at dpwondemand.com because that's pretty cool. And uh, DP Tony, Dub. You, yeah, Tony's going to serenade us on the way out of here. We gotta go. Hey, shut up! Hey, shut the hell up! Shut up, we got man! To We're go. out. We, we I have minuscule go. tasks to do, and I can't have you talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> vote you for Johnny. Take food off my family, Johnny. Is that what you're vote, doing over here? Vote for Johnny 2024. <laughs> or don't. <laughs>